structures that make these events possible. Um, M&I Bowling is our bowling sponsor for the season. Have been now for, I think this is the seventh year. Waterloo Convention Visitors Bureau, without them we wouldn't have these events. So uh, if you didn't fill out your information for your hotel on your check-in sheet, please uh, check with us after you get done and, and get that filled in. Uh, that's how we get the money from them is from the hotel motel tax. So uh, that's an important thing. I am trained in STEAM. The STEAM team is a season-long sponsor. I am bowling as a season-long sponsor. And if you need to uh, order new jerseys, go to imbowling.com or mobileinfusion.com. Use the code GIDA and you'll get a 25% discount. That's the best discount to get, guys. Uh, Budweiser, Bud Light, Quick Star. So when you fill your, you fill your tank up to head for home, please... Uh, Use Quick Star. I'll, I'll do my best to look like the OP on Ridgeway and Anthony and provides uh, room for uh, Mike Flanagan with InsideBowling.com who's doing our live stream. So if you have family, friends that want to watch along while you bowl, have them go to InsideBowling.com and we can find the live stream information there. Also, there will be a link to the standings on our Greater Iowa Bowling Association Facebook page. So they can check the standings anytime. That's a, a live link on there. And last but not least, your skip pattern for the day. You'll be doing skip one, skip two, skip one, skip two, skip one, skip two. One, two, one, two, one, two. Uh, we're going to get you started here shortly. I've got. Uh, one person finishing up their check-in, and uh, then we'll turn them on for 10 minutes of shadow ball. could uh, hit the play button in the lower right corner. That'll turn your lanes on for you. And then I'll assign you with your 10 minutes of practice.
And good afternoon, everyone. Welcome into the 2023 Ebonite Fall Classic here from Maple Lanes here in Waterloo, Iowa. My name is Mike Flanagan, and I invite you to join us for all seven games of qualifying here today. Here I am, by the way. Just wanted to say hello. I got the booth cam working. I know many people wanted to see me, so here I am. It's working great, and uh, I'm looking forward to bringing you these seven games. Eric Liddick is going to join me here in just a little bit. Uh, we'll take you out to the lanes, and we'll start uh, over here on lanes five and six, seven and eight, where we have Darren Galbraith, Chris Gregg, Shane Schoen, or Shane, I believe it is, Shane Shane, uh, Joe Walker on three and four, five and six, here for game number one. Today's Ebonite Fall Classic is contested on a fairly demanding lane condition here. 42 feet in length, 19 mils just about on the way down, 7 on the way back. Makes 26 total mils, 2.38 to 1 ratio on the left, 2.26 to 1 ratio on the right. Very similar to the USBC Open Championships team pattern, but uh, looks like they got a little more squirrely down lane here than uh, from what I can remember from the Open Championships this year, just from what I've observed and glanced at. Some pretty good bowlers did not bowl well. So it was a pretty tricky pattern for everybody. Currently right now your tournament leader is Brent Boho at plus 177 after the 58 competitors took to the lanes this morning. Excuse me, 56 competitors took to the lanes this morning. We are cashing one in three, so 56 will make it after the three rounds of qualifying. But Brent Boho leads at plus 177 for seven games. So that's uh, a little over 220 per game. And Alex Denton is in second at plus 167. Anthony Dodge in third at plus 166. Fourth, Troy Fuller at plus 119. Fifth is Pedro Irizarry at plus 113. Emma Wren is sixth at plus 97. Cameron Crowe is seventh at plus 93. Johnny Davis is an eighth at plus 89. Ninth is Alec Riesland at plus 83, tied with Brandon Mooney at 83. There were 19 of the 56 players were plus on the first squad. Plus five is the number at 19th, and that's David Cole. This squad here is full. And I'll tell you who is currently on the squad. I'll go around the horn. Brittany Smith, Sarah Smith, Andy Shutt, and Mike Yaw are down on one and two. Three and four has Zachary Gear, Trenton Holes, John Malone, and Jasmine Snell. Jasmine bowled extremely well on the PWBA Tour and uh, bowled pretty well in the last event of the season, making the step ladder finals. And she is competing here uh, today. Uh, we already went over 5 and 6, 7 and 8. I'll skip there. Darren Bloomquist is on 9 and 10, along with Gage Knutson, Brian Tippett, and William Young. Over on 11 and 12, we have Ethan Graves, Jacob Kraft, Logan Schur, Zachary Sheets. Over on 13 and 14, we have Nick DiCasaro. Excuse me, Nick DiCasaro. Chris Hill, Tony Oliva, Rob Warren. On 15 and 16, we have Zach Rhodes, Justin Stewart, Jake Cook, Luke Fisher. 17 and 18, Jake Gens with Andy Stone, Laura Stone, and Mike Peck. Over on 19 and 20, we have Cedric Judson, Aaron Williams, Jacob Fisher, and Riley Rydell. That's 19 and 20. 21 and 2, Patrick Hobda, Garrett Meadows, Josh Kennedy, Josh Zilk. On 23 and 24, Brooke Allen along with Brody Green, Jerry Mars, Brendan Sramick on 25 and 26. We have Jacob Bianchi, Russ Cruz Jr., Greg Olson, and Ryan Powers. And on 27 and 28, we have Jake Bedard with Jason Crajan, Dave Dentlinger, and Eric Kent. So that uh, that is your entire field rundown here for the B squad. 
C squad still coming up later tonight. We'll have 56 new players from there. Talking about Jasmine Snell earlier, and I had to look it up. I wanted to get the exact results. She finished fifth at the Pepsi Open. That was at Cadillac Lanes. That's just right down the road uh, just a couple months ago. Check in on the chat here, Shelly. I see your request here. He'll be on in one of the next two games, that's for sure, because I've got 5 and 6, 7 and 8, and then I've got uh, 11 and 12, 13 and 14, so he'll be making the skip through. Hello to Tom W. For, from Germany. Hello, sir. And, um, yeah, but how many lanes do they move between games? I didn't listen to the skip procedure, but it's it's a it's – they move across the whole place, but because it's only 28 lanes, the skip procedure, I don't believe, is quite as drastic. I'll find out real quick.
Yeah, so the skip procedure is really simple. It's skip one, skip two, skip one, skip two, skip one, skip two. So we'll have him uh, the second game if he's on three and four. This tournament wouldn't be possible without our great sponsors. I'd like to thank Ebonite for being the title sponsor. They've been introducing some new bowling balls lately. Um, throwback names. Uh, they've got uh, a throwback ball for the one, the one encore. They've also got the fireball, which is an old school ball name, but uh, it's been revamped. Looks really cool going down the lane. Also makers of the GB4 and, of course, all the other great products that they have. If you're considering a new bowling ball, check out Ebonite.com. would also like to thank I Am Bowling for their jersey sponsorship. You can save 25% over at their website, IamBowling.com, with coupon code GIBA. GIBA will save you 25%. In addition to that, we'd like to thank the uh, other place on Ridgeway for their continued support of this event, local restaurant here. And then we'd also like to thank Brandon Steen from the Steen team. If you're looking for a mortgage, Brandon Steen will take care of you. Check out Brandon Steen from the Steen team. We also would like to thank the Hampton Inn. That's where I stay when I come up here, the official hotel of the Greater Iowa Bowling Association, the Hampton Inn. I'd like to thank Budweiser and Bud Light. Please remember to always drink responsibly. Of course, the Waterloo Convention and Visitors Bureau as well, a longtime title sponsor of this event. A lot of bowlers coming into Waterloo for this event, and the Waterloo Convention and Visitors Bureau certainly does appreciate that. And when you're filling up your gas tank, coming in or out of town, make sure you hit up Quick Star or Quick Trip. Great chain that helps support this event as well. A lot of gas coming in and out of town. Folks travel from all the different states to come on in. So our scoring pace is quite low, as I mentioned, in comparison to your local house tournaments. Right now, to be in 18th position, it's plus seven, which is a 201 average. That would make the cut. It's $160 entry fee here, $2,800 for first. The top five all are guaranteed at least $1,100 on their $160 entry fee. It's a really great return on investment, thanks to all those sponsors I mentioned. If you have any questions throughout today's broadcast, feel free to ask them in the chat. Again, starting in game two, I'll have Eric Littig come in, who knows a lot of the young players that are here and a lot of the local players. He lives not too far from here. Always enjoy Eric coming in and joining me here in the booth. Been coming to Iowa since 2012 for these events twice a year. Dennis Workman wants to know, I don't see any familiar names. Is this closed to the PBA? No, it's not closed to the PBA. But I'll tell you a reason why you don't see a lot of big names from the PBA come and bowl this event. They normally come to the events that advertise $10,000 up top. So it'll go like $10,000, $5,000, $2,500, $1,500. A thousand and so on in a payout. Joe pays out one and three, which is kind of unheard of. And then what Joe also does up here is he pays out at least a thousand dollars to the top five. And a lot of those bigger entry tournaments that pay ten thousand up top are three hundred dollar entry fees, two hundred and fifty dollar entry fees. Here it's a hundred and sixty. So it's a much more evenly distributed prize list, which and it's there's no airport really close to here. So a lot of the pros, this, this isn't on their radar. But anybody that lives in a neighboring state, this is most definitely one you want to come and, and bowl because the payout's great. It's, it's challenging but not impossible. And it's a true test 
um, of your skills. So, and it's a great center to come to, great people run it, and it's a great little town to come up to to be part of uh, supporting what's going on here in this town. they got some great breweries, places to go, sports bars, restaurants, stuff like that. they got a casino here. Um, it's got a little bit of everything. So that that's why this, uh, this event is unique. I can tell you that a lot of future PBA bowlers have come through here, and some PBA bowlers have come through depending on the PBA season, normally the one in February more so. But with, they have two majors, the Greater Iowa Bowling Association. You can find out more information at GIBA-Bowling.com. And when you go to that website, you can check out that there's two majors every year. This one here in September, the Ebonite Fall Classic and the Ebonite Winter Classic, which will take place in February. Here at Maple Lanes is the one that we do in September. And then at Cadillac XBC right down the road, not too far from here, is where we do the February event. And it's pretty cool because this this center is, is basically brand new. It's just a couple years old. And the um, lane surface is, is, is really new, and it's AMF's SPL lanes, higher friction surface. Cadillac has the um, Brunswick Pro Anvil lane, which is a little bit slicker surface and a little bit older. So when you come up here, you really get get to see a little bit of everything, different characteristics of how the actual lane panels themselves play not to mention the, the oil they put out on the lanes and the conditions that you see here. Streaming from Wayne, Nebraska, hoping to see Mike Peck on lane 17 and 18 and 21 and 22. Will the cameras be moving to the right? No, we won't be moving cameras, but the bowlers will come to us. So they will eventually be here. Um, so 17, 18, 21, 22, then they'll go 23, 24, uh, 27, and 8. Skip a pair. Probably be here game 5. Second ball I ever bought was an M&I Gyro. Okay, good luck and best bowling for everyone. Hello from Belgium, hello. Now this evening on C Squad, I'm gonna check the list. Not that this list is the most updated list in the world, but I thought I saw Nick Pate. Yeah, Nick Pate's supposed to bowl tonight. Brady Stearns, Mark Stinger, Kai Yamada is bowling tonight. Ken Duffield's bowling tonight. Gabe Bartlett's bowling tonight. Always good to see Gabe. He's probably working today and coming over here to bowl tonight. Darren Galbraith, though, off to a good start. Spare, spare, five-bagger over there on lanes five and six.
no problem. Sharon, no problem. Got you squared away. Heard you mention the type of lane surface. How many different types are there? AMF, Brunswick, and what are the different characteristics things in advance? Yeah, Mike, so I don't know if I am the best qualified to answer this question, but I will give you the best answer that I possibly can. So Brunswick made a, a panel in the 80s, and it was one of the original synthetic panels, and... Um, a lot of those have been taken up because of durability reasons. I mean, it is 40 years later, um, so that's a pretty long time. I think of bowling lanes like I think of a roof on a house. That's how often you need to replace bowling lanes, synthetic panels. So then Brunswick came out with a, um, with a pro lane, then a pro anvil lane, and then another type of pro anvil um, and the, the, all the anvil named lanes, for whatever reason, when you put down the oil pattern, it played pretty slick. It didn't require as much oil, and it seemed more extreme when you put the oil on as it moved around. It seemed like on that surface, your bowling ball just didn't grab it quite as much, right? So think about how that affects the oil. AMF... Um, had a, had a lane surface called HPL, HPL, and uh, which I'm not sure what it stood for, probably high performance lane, but HPL, and um, those that that lane surface was still, you know, very, very coarse or very, very slick, I should say, um, but the ball picked up a little bit more on it. Not a, not a lot, just a little bit more, just a little bit more. So when you would put down the same pattern on a, on, a, on a Brunswick Pro Lane or Pro Anvil Lane as opposed to this uh, SPL or HPL, this is SPL, the latest version of AMF, it just hooks a little bit more, though, same oil pattern with the characteristics of, of the lanes. The other thing is, is when they installed these lanes, they learned a lot over the years on synthetics on where they screw them down because they have to be, you know, screwed down to the wood underneath or to the joist underneath. So if you would oil, if you would screw them down on the one board, the gutter didn't play very well. Like it was really tough to play the gutter because it was like a little bit of depression. So it had to come uphill from the gutter. It would just fall off into the gutter. Then they started um, screwing the lanes down at the two board and then the three board, depending on different ones. And again, I'm not a 100% expert on this, so some of the things that I'm saying, if you are a lane expert, I'm close with what I'm saying, but I'm probably not 100%. Then there's also other lane services that came out, like Mendez, um, Hedden came out with a synthetic panel. So there's been several different ones out there over the years. And if you go to, like, church basements where they have lanes or, or different places, um, boutique places, a lot of times you'll see these odd lanes that are installed. And they play all differently. Um, they didn't have as much uh, tech support um, resources backing them up. So Brunswick and AMF are kind of the go-tos, and I have the most information about those. But... They can all play very much differently. And then when you also take into consideration of, you know, older lane beds have been beaten to death. I mean, how many times, every time a bowling ball touches a lane, it's like a hammer hitting the wall, right? Well, it starts to create, you know, the wood underneath can only handle so much. And it starts to make dis differences in topography. So your ball may be going uphill or downhill or, or you know, when you throw it to the right, it may go to the right or, or, or to the or may want to hook, depending on where the depression is in the lanes. And that's why at all the big USB-C events, they map the lanes and give you roadmap to which way everything goes. So that's, uh, that's a little update for you on how all that works. Did you need me?
So hopefully that answers the, uh, the synthetic lane question. You bet. You bet. It's pretty decent games here out of the gate. So impossible 247 for Logan Mason. Looking at 234 next door. It's always nice to be able to bowl, you know, the fresh game on your fresh pair and bowl 220, 230, or 240 because you had a chance to break them down the way that you wanted to during practice. It's when you move that you just you have no idea what you're going to run into. That's why on the PBA Tour you see people, they scout pairs so they know if your thing went down the lane and things like that on, on how much different they're going to be when you go pair to pair. We did have 250 bold on uh, 13 and 14. It was either Tony Oliva or Rob Warren.
Alright, we're going to move over to game two. I suppose we'll just stay here. I'm going to make a uh, slight adjustment to that camera, though. Because there's nothing going on over here. So might as well stay here. Make a slight adjustment. Be right back. You can go whatever direction you want to go. So you can you can either go boom or you can go boom. So I know I'm gonna do that side. Alright, so game number two underway here. I told you we'd have a special guest. My guest is Eric Littig. Hello, Eric. Howdy. I don't call that special, Mike. You are a special guest. <laughs> You are a special guest, <laughs> and uh, just to put a name with a face, I'll uh, bring it into the booth for just a second. Booth cam is working. Everybody was requesting this earlier today. Uh, I got it working during the break, so my name is Mike. This is Eric. We're gonna bring you some bowling here, and uh, I'm on five. I'm on five and six, seven and eight. So here's all of our here's our road map mm -hmm. of where everybody is. You can probably name them all without looking at the road map for the most part. Uh, not all of them. A lot of them, but not all of them. Well, we do have Jasmine Snell, mm -hmm. who just finished fifth down the street in a PWBA national event at the Pepsi Open. Yeah, she's a good player. She is. And I, she, she's I, smart, too. And I see her, but usually she travels with her husband, Michael, and I don't see him. I don't think he's on the roster, either. I don't remember seeing him. I didn't, I didn't see him on there, either. Yeah. Uh, so... Looking it over now. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember. I, I remember looking at the roster. I know that's roster changes over the especially over the last week but I don't remember seeing him on there yeah it did change quite a bit mm -hmm. yeah at one time he Joe had 30 odd people on the waiting list and the waiting list was exhausted by Wednesday so so Jasmine uh, she is on lanes uh, five and six there 
She's bowling with uh, John Malone, Trenton Holtz, and Zachary Gear. Mm -hmm. And I know we have some folks in the chat. We're looking forward to watching uh, Zach bowl. He bowled for Wisconsin Whitewater. And then next door we got Darren Galbraith, Chris Gregg. Is it Shane Shane or Shane Shone? Shone. Okay, Shane Shone and Joe Walker. Yeah, I kind of was watching the scores, and it looked pretty similar to what I, I thought this morning to A-Squad, how A-Squad started. You're always going to have some, some good games and some really bad ones out of the gate, but... Yeah, I don't really make any comparisons till game three, mm -hmm. just because everybody bowls on their own starting pair for the fresh on game one. Yep, and that's why you tend to see a lot of, you know, some bigger scores early because you got that ten minutes of practice to figure yep. things out. Yep. Plus, uh, it, it, last night's practice squad, it wasn't, you know, there it was a pretty light turnout because it was 3:30 to 5:30, but but some of the guys that did bowl the practice squad last night were were commenting how they thought it was very similar to how things started today. I thought the scoring would be a little bit higher today. I did too. But from what I can under, from what I understand, what I hear and what I see is that there's a lot of friction in the first 20% of the lane and it, they're playing pretty slick down lane right of 10. I think you hit it on the head because when I looked at the pattern when when I got here yesterday it only showed 7 you know, seven mils of reverse, which means you're going to have to work a little extra harder to get it to the spot that you're looking at. You're not going to get any free push until you move in and there's some carry down later in the day. But Right, but unfortunately, uh, if you get the ball like right at 10 down lane, mm -hmm. it just doesn't want to hook. Yeah, and if you're playing right to start, which, uh, you know, I thought that was kind of one of the best best game plans was to stay right as long as you can, but if you get it right at five, it's going to labor. And that's what brought that 210 and 2810 combination into play earlier. And even, like you said, Mike, even when you, with the guys that did move in, you, you didn't have all that free hook down lane to the right. You had to really throw it well to make it come off that. And that's probably why, you know, kind of theoretical cut after one squad is, you know, not, not much over par. Yeah, it's like five, pins. five or seven over, depending yes. on how you want to shake it. Yep. Yeah, 18 and a half, you know, <laughs> 18th and 19th place. Dennis yep. Hacker asked the question, did the PBA events in Lebanon, Missouri, and Jonesboro, Arkansas affect the entries here? I would say the answer would be yes, it affected the entries because there were players chose to go bowl that instead of here, but it did not affect the entries in, in terms of selling out. In terms of number, yeah. Yeah, there's always more demand than there is supply here. Mm -hmm. So it just allowed some of those procrastinators to get in that normally don't. Mm -hmm. yeah, may, maybe at the you know the top tier of the event, some of your top players that make a habit out of bowling this event, maybe a few of them aren't here because of that. Yeah, like Tom, Tom Hess is the one that comes to mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, normally he's, normally he's here. Yeah, he's won. I think he's won this three times. Yeah, I believe I believe that is the number on Tom. Nate Stubler's won it twice, and he was originally going to bowl A squad, but he's working today, so he's going to bowl C squad tonight. Where's he working at? He's doing accounting. Oh, is he? But I take that back. Um, somebody told me he's. Uh, I just found out today. I didn't realize that somebody told me he's tending bar somewhere, but I don't think he's tending bar on a Saturday until two o'clock in the afternoon. But I could be wrong. Maybe they have something going on. Yeah, and I would. I would think he would have a better per hour wage here <laughs> on the lanes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, part of the fun of being here the whole time for all three squads is watching that number kind of dance around. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really didn't go anywhere all day today. It kind of hovered between, I think the highest it ever got was after, after three games, I think it was 22, but then two games later it was plus seven, or plus three actually. 
And it went to plus 15 going into the last game. And then it dropped a little bit the last game, so. I know typically in this event, C squad for what for a variety of reasons is not you know tends to be a little bit not quite as deep as the other squads but C squad's a really good squad this year tonight mm -hmm. Joe and I were talking at the 11th frame how that kind of panned out and that C squad was you know much deeper than it typically is in this event for whatever reason the 11th frame seems to draw a little bit bigger names than this it kind of kind of comes and goes over the years 11th frames always you know kind of the kind of the signature I always call it the signature kickoff event to the season it is really the first one first big event of the yeah, year first one that drops yep I mean, if you're going to talk, we've talked about this before, if you're going to talk about the major, you know, other than your pro tournaments, your major events of the year, you've got your fall classic, your winter classic, and your 11th frame. Those are the, what I would call the three majors. Yep, up here, yep. Yep, up here in this area, right. It's always amazing, isn't it, how these events, how there's so much talent that comes from all over the place to bowl. Mm -hmm. And that's never really changed about the game of bowling. All the good bowlers, they want to bowl against the good bowlers. Yeah, the thing for me that I, I always find interesting coming here is, is who you see or who you don't see and who's missing and who's coming mm -hmm. and going. Like, you know, a guy like Clay Reese or yeah, Chuck Grote would come in from Utah. Yeah, we've seen Clay over the years here quite a bit. He's not here this year. He doesn't make everyone, but no. he makes his fair share of them. And he's usually a factor when he's here. Is Chad Nelson bowling? He is. He's bowling C Squad tonight. Okay. He's now uh, on the PBA 50 tour. Yep. I think he just turned 50, didn't he? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Right yep. on it. And Chad can Chad can play. He'll get he'll get his share out there. Nick Pate bowls tonight. Yep. Nick has won, uh, oh, he won the 11th frame last year, I believe. Nick has won this event also. Okay. I couldn't remember if it was this one. I think he's won both. Yeah. Which uh, is not going to surprise anybody. I don't know when they've updated this, but. Is he on there? Yeah, February of 2018. Okay. Yeah. And he won, I think, I think he won the 11th frame a year ago. I know Dakota Salanka, who just won the 11th frame, he's bowling C squad tonight. Trenton Holes bowls for Wisconsin Milwaukee and was Collegiate Club Player of the Year. Wow. I used to come up here and be like super familiar with everybody, but it's such a revolving door now that. Mm -hmm. Well, I always say in this event, it's probably probably 40 to 50 percent either active collegiate players or players that have only been away from it a year or two. But there's still a lot of really good players that are older that bowl this event too. Yeah, I didn't see Tony Mana on this list either. No, and he usually comes to this. He was at the 11th frame. Ryan Powers is here, though. I tried to get the area. I tried to get um, Bobby Hibbler. Yeah. Hibbler, you know that guy? He, there, he's bowling C squad. I, yeah, but I, he's not on the list anymore. Oh, did he? How about maybe he canceled? There was a lot of cancellations this week. Yeah, I wonder why. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, 
Yeah, just looking looking at the scores, kind of surveying the whole landscape here. You don't see a lot of strings of strikes this game. That's what it's almost kind of eerie. That's what happened the, this morning. You know, the first couple games weren't all that much, and then three the game three the scoring kind of took a, a pretty big leap, and then it settled back down again. I wonder if that's what we're gonna get. Right. I mean, sitting here, I only I, I see a few three baggers and one four bagger down there, but I see a lot of. That's kind of the way it was this morning. You see a lot of 70 and 80 in the fifth. But you also, you know, that's kind of tournament bowling. You go to a new pair, especially on these kind of patterns, to where as the day progresses, you know, each pair is going to develop its own, you know, personality because you've got there. There. This is not one. When we were at the 11th frame, that's a pretty one-dimensional pattern where everybody has to get it to the same point on the lane. And while I said after the practice session last night, I liked staying right as long as you could before you make a big jump left, it wasn't impossible to move left a little earlier than I thought. There were guys that were doing it. So there, when you enter that you know, multiple angle approach, it doesn't shut any style out, but what it does is make every pair, you know, independent of the rest of them because of who bowled there. Nick DeSaro uh, is in first after one game, bowled 255. Brendan Tramick bowled 248. Logan Mason bowled 246. Trenton Holst bowled 243. Darren Bloomquist had 242. Zach Rhodes, 235. Darren Galbraith, 234. Ryan Powers, 232. Russ Cruz, Jr., 231. And Jerry Mars, 229. Josh Kennedy, 223. Jake Gentz, 222. Andy Shutt, 219. Jacob Kraft, 217. Dave Dentlinger, 215. And then the other players that uh, bowled 200 or more. Conan Mackey, 22nd at plus one. Patrick Hobdes plus two, Jake Cook plus five, along with Luke Fisher, Kyle Clark 13 over with Gear, Zachary Gear, Jacob Bianchi 14 over. So there's your there's your numbers. I kind of got the first sheet, first squad of sheet two, and it looked very familiar to that. Yeah, it looks very similar. Yeah. Yeah, the first squad that there were four bowlers that shot four bowlers that shot 240, and this squad there were five bowlers that shot 240. So. Yep. If I if I was bowling on this, well, I think there's two different ways to play it. I think you got to play like 15 to 10 right in the tube. And if you're going left to right a little bit, you got to keep your ball speed down a little bit. And if you're going up at them, you got to stay firm with your ball speed. I agree with that 100%. Because, like you mentioned earlier, if you start going away from it too much and you're a little firm or miss it, it just will never see it. It'll keep never going. Never There was a ton of 210s, 2810s, buckets. Uh, how, I, it's been a long time since I've seen a tournament where I saw this many rolled two pins that rolled forward. And that's because, you know, starting out those first two, three games playing right, it was, it was that that's the angle it was coming in at. It's playing it almost late. like 44 feet, mm -hmm. 45 feet. It's playing yeah. longer. Yes. Yep. yep. Yeah, the guys that were going left to right that had a little bit softer speed and softer hand, that that was the answer. But I'm sure if I you know, looked at the final standings, I'm sure there was some bowlers that threw it pretty hard and bowled well too. But overall, I agree with you. I think that's the preferred shot shape that I saw is a little softer and because it was easy to throw it right through the pattern. Because like you say, it's playing a little longer than the, the 42 feet that it is. Jasmine's struggling a little this game. You see she's got 114 in the seventh, and it looks like she's kind of leaning there, pondering what to do. Just kind of had that look on her face. <laughs> she 
She looked like she looked like she moved a little left. I don't know about that shot. To me, it looked like she grabbed a little bit more at the bottom. She yeah, placed she, it right on the lane and got her out. She, she was got, aggressive. She got a handful for her, mm -hmm. right? And that's why she snapped the 10 right out of there. Yeah. yeah. If she misses it just a little bit or throws a little hard, it's a two-pin combo. Yes. Yep. And you don't mind that because you don't mind being, you know, getting aggressive, getting after it. This is one of them typical patterns you, you know, you watch and you think, oh, I can, I can just kind of bowl okay and get to 100 over, and it doesn't work that way. Tony uh, Mana's daughter is getting married tonight, so congratulations to her. Okay, we'll we'll give Tony an, a free pass for not being here. Yep. Yeah. I want to give a shout out to Corky's Chisholm, my man from the Nightmare Doubles event that will be streaming right here on Inside Bowling next month. He says we're back for the fall and winter winter run. That's right. <laughs> We've been waiting for the stream for months. What's up, Mike? What's up, man? If you would like to get more information about the Nightmare Doubles. Head over to Facebook, type in the Nightmare Doubles, DV8 Nightmare Doubles, and uh, they'll get you all squared away for that one. It's going to be a big doubles event coming up here next month. As a matter of fact, I'll give you the date on that because I have my calendar here. Where's that tournament at, Mike? It's in Memphis. Oh, that's right. That's right. At a former Andy B Center. There's now a Bolero Center. Mm -hmm. And it is the 14th and 15th of October. Our Greater Iowa Scholarship Tournament is right here next weekend. This tournament, or this bowling center. Really? Yep. Last several years we followed this event with ours. How many do you draw for that nowadays? Well, uh, well this tournament, because it's only a 28-lane center, we're limited to 84, but we currently only have about Eight or nine, in, eight or nine spots left, but that'll be full. Last month in our season opener, we had 94. So, very nice. Yep. The one thing you don't want to do on this, not to single anybody out, but you don't, you know, you. If you're struggling on your spares, there simply isn't enough strike. And as soon as I say that, I saw two single pins missed. But, you know, it's, there just isn't enough big strings of strikes out there to make up for some loose spare shooting. That's kind of like a broken record that we, you know, that's in the 20 years or so. Oh, and I There's said another that. one. There's another missed 10 pin. Yep, I'm not faulting for anybody for that. I've been there, done that, but. But, yeah, it's just hard to make up for, you know, three or four single pin misses in seven games. That's 40 or 50 pins, and, boy, there's going to be a lot of people missed a cup by 40 or 50 pins. I said to you earlier today, Mike, we were joking, and I said that's the modern way of bowling because Kyle Kroll started his first game with nine strikes, and he had... I believe he had 203, and I said to you, that's the modern way of bowling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and some of, some of these patterns, it, you don't want to ever make an excuse for missing a single pin, but some of these patterns, boy, when there's more than one of them standing, there, it's not a gimme spare. No, not at all. Yeah, Ryan, it is Eric Littig in the booth. You know, I always think I should put like a little a little graphic up or something for that. With me, it wouldn't be a little graphic. Well, <laughs> it'd still be a little graphic. <laughs> Ryan who, Mike? Somebody in the chat room? Yeah, Ryan uh, Culpa. Oh, my God, I haven't heard. I haven't uh, heard that name in ages. Ryan and his older brother, Chad, or I can't remember who was the youngest and who was the oldest. They're from Rockford, Illinois. Yep. I think Chad was the older one, and then Ryan was the younger one. Well, I'm going to do this real quick so they know who's in here. It's me and you. 
You just and me. you and me, kid. That's it. That's right. <laughs> Just you and me, kid. So I'll give you a little bit of a throwback. I I was uh, I'm, I moved from uh, Utah to to Missouri. Okay, somebody asked me that uh, a couple weeks ago. Was talking to me, and I told him on the phone. Oh, it was Terry Howe from Minnesota was asking me about if you were still in Utah, and I said I'm pretty sure he moved back to Missouri. Yeah. It, it's kind of weird, too, because a lot of people are talking about this. Like, a lot of people are very interested in this move. Mm. It is it is a rather large move. Yeah. Uh, my house is supposed to close on October the 5th. Okay. How long were you in Utah, Mike? Ten years. Ten years? I would have guessed, like, four or five. Ten years. Holy smokes. Like, four months. Wow. Yeah. Ten years, dude. Can you believe it? Wow. About 23% of my life. That's what I was going to say. Holy smokes. And I lived in that house longer than I lived in any other place ever in my life. Mm. I've, I've lived in 19 different places. Oh, my goodness. Can you believe that? And I was there for wow. 10 years. Yeah. So I I, um, I refused to pay $15,000 to move. Mm-hmm. So I got my girlfriend, Kim, and I. We, we did the whole move ourselves with a little bit of help from from some friends and that little bit of help went a long way actually yeah um but i rented a budget truck a 26 footer and i sold almost all my furniture Mm -hmm. and we uh i I drove this budget truck 1350 miles i don't think that sounds like a fun fun time and i'm and i'm no truck driver but now i am so i'm for hire And so, listen to this, You're right? Supplement your income. Aren't so you? I, I started looking this, and this is gonna, this is the educational segment of this, right? The ag- educational segment of inside bowling today. Always gotta have that. I've yep. saved people a lot of money by telling them to get the zero deductible comprehensive for windshields, and if you hit a deer or anything mm-hmm. like that, people have thanked me over the years for that. Mm. Cost you like two bucks a month. If you replace a windshield once every four years, it pays for itself. How many yep. rock chips do you get in your window? Yep. Lots. Anyway, so here's my moving tip if you're going to move yourself. I needed to get a, a, a box truck. So I went on Penske.com and found that I heard they had the best trucks. And they gave you 10% off, and it was going to be like 3300 bucks plus 10% off, and that doesn't include the fuel. It's a lot of money. That's a lot less than 15000 though. But it's still too much money. Mm-hmm. Well, I found out you could stack a AAA discount with it. Oh. So I got 12% more AAA. Okay. I bought a AAA card for 10 bucks, So now I'm saving 600 Sounds mm. good, right? I called Ryder. They won't rent one ways. And you have to have a business account, which I did qualify for, mm-hmm. but they won't do one ways. Enterprise will not do one ways. U-Haul does. They were three grand, and budget was thirty four hundred. Hmm. But I have a Costco membership. Oh no! So I went on the Costco budget truck rental side of things. Sixteen hundred dollars oh, out the door. Man. Out the door. That's so a that's I, a big savings. So I booked it. I yeah. booked it. So there's your travel tip. Yep. And this goes for any, like, let's say you need, like, a 12-footer cargo van, whatever it is that you need. If you need to travel at all one way, local, maybe it's different, get a Costco membership. Costs you 70 bucks for the membership, and you can get great deals on budget rent trucks There you go. And that's what I did. Yeah. So, yeah, so we did that move, and... Um, it's 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 good to have done that. So, I don't know. I don't, were we going somewhere with that? Was there? You just did. You went from Utah to Missouri. Yeah, I thought there you was. You went 1,300 miles with that. Thought I was going something. <laughs> thought I was doing something. We got off on a tangent. I did. I don't remember what we were. You were talking, talking about how you'd lived there longer than anywhere else. And yeah, I did. Yep, yep. I did. Yeah, I can't believe you were there 10 years. Holy smokes. Yeah, 10 years in Utah. Yeah, my friend Terry was asking about you the other night. Terry Howe from Minnesota. She called me. I hadn't seen Terry, you know, since nationals, collegiate nationals in Vegas. And she called me at at uh, 921 at night. We got off the phone at 141 in the morning. Oh, my gosh. Four hours and 20 minutes. Some people think you talked for that that long. And I'm like, yeah, I guess I had nothing else to do. <laughs> 
But well, that's what we do, Mike. We talk bowling. Yep. Whether it's on the phone or in person or in the booth, we talk bowling. But we talk other things, too. Yeah, so there you go. So I'm, I, you know, I'm now a little closer located here. And yeah. Whoa, almost another 710. Mr. You know, Tippett. I, I didn't see a lot of 710s this morning. I really didn't. I saw a lot of 710 standing, but one of them all, always got, you know, stormtroopered out of there. 248 there posted up on the board. Just leaving your phone all over the place? No, I left it in the hotel this morning and forgot oh, okay. about it. Not that anybody wants to talk to me, but... Here's a 710 that was converted earlier today. I don't know if you saw this yeah, one or not. Kenny. I didn't see it. I heard Kenny Calkins made it. Yep, he did. That's how you do it. Yep. Yeah, so, so now that I'm cashing out of my house, I, I, don't, I don't have a house, and I can't afford a house now. <laughs> I live in an apartment, Mike. Do you really? Yep. And guess what? What? I, I'm gone about 100 days of the year, 100 nights of the year I spend in hotel rooms. And guess what? I don't want to mow the lawn. I don't want to shovel the snow. I don't want to belong to a condo where somebody knocks on the door and says we need six grand to pave the parking lot or to put a new roof on the complex. If the dishwasher or refrigerator breaks, I call them and they come fix it. And I can be gone however long I want to. I know that doesn't work for everybody, but it works for me. That's great. Just finishing up game two here. Yep. I want I want a compound. That's what I want. Yeah. <laughs> a man with a mansion in it. Basically. <laughs> yep. Well, no, I just want a very efficient 4,000 square foot home. Mm -hmm. You know, just something small. Something pretty small, you know. Yep. All of a sudden. All of a sudden, I don't hear a single ball. Oh yeah, thrown. I know. It's isn't that kind of. It's kind of. It's kind of nice though, right yeah. now, because and that yeah. means they're not all out of whack. And here they're going now. So. All right. Let's see. I'm gonna add this in here. I gotta tell you, I'm a little rusty. I, I I see right in front of us uh, Dave Dentlinger there bowling. I thought I saw something on Facebook last week or the week before that he finished second out there in the the summer tap out in Las Vegas. I thought I saw that. He very well may that have. he finished second. Yeah. There we are. We're back. We're in the corner. So who do we have on our pair of this game here? So we're over here on the right, 11 yep. and 12. Brittany Smith, Michael Yaw. Andy Shutt yep. and uh, Sarah Smith. Yep. And then uh, on the pair next, we should have Zachary Gear again, Trenton Holtz, yeah. John Malone, and Jasmine Snell again. Yep. And then we can swap over to five through eight a little bit here and there as well. Mm -hmm. So what's going on in the college scene this year for you? Uh, well, we haven't started competing yet. The, our first tournament's two weeks from this weekend. How's the team look? Well, we have a, a lot of freshmen on the team. Um, a lot of them that were bowling this or will be bowling this event. Are we just kind of completed tryouts? We still have some makeup games next week for for bowlers that had classes interfere and that have some makeup games. But our our men's winner, our women's 
uh, not finished yet. We have a couple girls to make some games up, but our men's winner was Kendrick Siders, one of my freshmen from Alaska. Oh, wow. Um, he was named USA Today High School Bowler of the Year this year. He throws the ball very nice. He averaged 210 for the 29 games. So, yeah, we, I think, I think there's a college tournament this weekend out east for some of the teams, and I think that might be the first college tournament of the year. It's just getting started. Now, pardon my ignorance in the college bowling scene, but I will tell you, and I was telling Patrick Martinez this earlier today in the chat room, he wanted me to watch this video he edited that supposedly I'm in during the lunch break. And I told him that's the last thing I want to do on my lunch break is to watch bowling. Okay. Yes. Now, I may sound like a get-off-my-lawn, old, <laughs> unappreciative, I-don't-love-bowling-anymore guy, but that's not the case. But I will tell you that I have paid less attention to anything I'm not involved with bowling-wise for my own sanity. I so, understand that. So the college bowling yeah. season and the rankings and how people did or anything like that, I almost purposely ignore it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to sound very dumb here, I believe, but something tells me I thought it was last year or was it the year before that you guys bowled for the national title on television? I don't want to brag, but we've bowled on national television two of the last three years for the national championship. Was it last year? Last year and two years prior to that. Okay, Wichita so, State beat us both times. Yep. Okay, so I do have this correct in my mind yep. that your team finished second at nationals mm -hmm. yes. this year, this past season. Yep. Yeah, we bowled really, really good, and we didn't have our best stuff. I didn't have my best stuff, my best decisions on that on the TV show, and if you slip up a little bit, you lose. You know, Wichita State being the premier program in the country, and they took it to us. Well, congratulations on making that show and finishing runner-up two of the last three years, buddy. That's pretty impressive. I appreciate that. The guys work hard, and, the, and you know, you have to have that to, to accomplish that. And I know it's disappointing to, to lose two out of the last three years, but uh, somebody's going to finish runner-up every year. There's only going to be one champion every year. See, um, and I don't see this as a negative at all, or I, I don't, I don't see anything bad in it at all. Nope. I mean, the college bowling stuff is ridiculously competitive and harder than it's ever been. You and I sat right in this booth. I can't remember if it was last year or the year before, but we were talking about college bowling, and I said when I, when I first started coaching St. Ambrose 11 years ago, I said, you know, it seemed to me like there was what I called the Big Seven, and then I said now it was like the Big 13, and I said five years from now it will probably be like the Big 20, and that's fantastic for the sport and fantastic for the, the, the game of college bowling, but it gets harder and harder because there are more good bowlers, more good teams. There's more money to be made out there and as far as scholarships and that, and therefore there's more and more good young bowlers to go around. Well, what's amazing to me with the whole thing is you would think that if there's that many programs, which is supply, right, in mm -hmm. the supply and demand game, mm -hmm. right, which is just business 101 and anything 101, really, you know, there's only so much time in a day and only so many resources available. But when you have the supply goes up in the amount of schools for bowlers, mm -hmm. It amazes me that the demand has gone up equally, if not more, coincidingly with the amount of opportunities that are available in bowling. Because you would think you wouldn't have enough good, talented players to fill out that many new programs. Well, and that's, you, you do now, and that's because of all of the scholarship bowling tours, now that you've got the PBA juniors, now you've got the Storm Youth Championships, where, which we're only in our seventh year of those. You've got so many things that have come up that allow young bowlers to go out there and compete. So by the time they're juniors and seniors in high school, they're starting to look where they want to go to college, and there are more good bowlers to go around. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. It is. I mean, 
I just I never cease to be amazed how much young talent. I mean, I go to junior gold every year. I go to team trials every year, and it is absolutely amazing how much good young talent there is. And that's the fun of being involved for me, you know, with the sport of bowling is who doesn't love watching the next new the next new thing, you know, the next new craze. There's always somebody coming around the corner that's going to be an outstanding bowler. Well, and it's no secret that bowling in general has become less popular, you know, from the 70s into the 80s, oh, into yeah. the 90s, into yep. the 2000s, into the 2000s and 10s, and then now into the 2020s. You know, it's it's been a, it's been a curve where it just it just keeps going down, right? And it always has to, you know, if you're skiing downhill, you can't just automatically start going up. You got to level you gotta out, bottom out, right, and then come mm -hmm. back up. Yes. And and I. I do kind of feel like from an interest in the sport and a popularity level, we, we have hit that. We, we have bottomed out. Mm -hmm. Like, we have hit that. And I'm starting to feel like in certain demographics in that, and youth and college, it, it certainly started going back up. Yep. And then that, if those bowlers stick with bowling and tell their kids this is what you need to be doing and you start multiplying that all out over the years, bowling is going to be in a better place moving forward. I'm not going to say it's going to be in an unbelievably great space where they're going to be building 10 centers in every major city. We, you know, the world changes every, you know, I, I know it's a stretch, but I always say, you know, back when electricity was invented, the kerosene business went out of business overnight. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it's kind of like bowling. I mean, back in the 70s and 80s when USBC, you know, the men and the women had 7 million members, we didn't have cable TV. There was no cable back then, Harvey. No. We didn't have computers, very, you know, very few. We didn't have cell phones. We didn't have casinos on every street corner in America. We didn't have a lot of the things techno technologically that we have today. So now, you know, your league bowling is way down from what it was 30 and 40 years ago. And like you and I just kind of said, that what what is kind of showing us the light at the end of the tunnel is happening with youth bowling and high school bowling and scholarship bowling and college bowling. And that's what's feeding the, the pro tours. And, and at those levels, the game's in a good place right now, and it's going to continue to to be in a good place. Now, whether we whether we drag league bowling up with that or not remains to be seen. It's too kind of early in the process for that. It is. It is. I mean, years ago, tournaments like this weren't a big part of bowling centers because they were filled with wall-to-wall -wall leagues, multiple shifts, multiple. You know, nights, they had open bowling. Now, centers do enjoy having tournaments on the weekends because it's added revenue coming in. Everything, cha everything changes and everything's cyclical, and I agree with you. I think, I think we bottomed out and, and we're headed back the other direction now. How, how, how slow or fast is that process? We don't know yet. Right, and we, we really don't know. And some other things still need to happen yep. for it to be really thriving. But but more, I think social media has actually helped bowling. Uh, I agree with that. I'll tell you why. Yeah. I'll tell you my reasoning behind this, and I hope I can I can explain this in a way that everybody understands. You can help me along if, if not. In the past, before social media, big wigs in marketing firms determined how products get marketed, and they pick what they want to be on the television screen on a commercial break. Yeah. Or they, these big wigs would pick, right? It's no secret that Eddie Elias had all these relationships with these big wigs at these big companies. And we had Firestone and Quaker State because of his relationship. Yeah. So it was when Eddie Elias went away, those relationships went away. A lot of sponsorship dollars went away. The Microsoft executives that bought the PBA weren't able to lean on their friends and higher-ups to be able to just have a 
boatload of money in, right? Yep. So bowling was always at the mercy of, does Bud Light want to put bowling in a commercial? Does Miller High Life want to put somebody in a commercial? You know, what do, what do we do to, to, to get bowling interest, you know, make interesting things in bowling? But yet organically, there were still a lot of people that liked to go bowling with their families and that. Yeah. But it didn't mean that it fit the demographic of what somebody was selling, nor was bowling sexy enough that they wanted to invest their dollars. So when everything goes to an even playing field and the public becomes the promoters, when it's up to me and you to determine what we want to talk about socially on these free applications, Facebook, MySpace back in the day, yep. TikTok, you know, Instagram, Snapchat. Well, now everybody's posting what they're doing. And I feel like back in the day, this people were bowling, but the executives were choosing not to showcase bowling. When everything goes to organic reach, from the, the human beings that are on this planet, and it's up to them to promote what they're doing or say what they're doing, bowling now no longer has this filter of higher-up executives determining whether or not we get our due. Now it's people are doing it's what they're doing, game. and they're yeah. putting it out, yeah. right? Yep. So I, I look at Strike 10 Entertainment, who's done a tremendous job of putting awareness on bowling. The reason why the ball companies have to support the PBA Tour or have decided to support the PBA Tour over the years is so bowling can continue to be on television. Yep, yep. Because that's the number one way to advertise our bowling. The sport, yes. Yeah. Yep. If, if bowling's not on television, less people are thinking about it. Right. They don't even think about going bowling. Nope. That's why they pay so much to be on the Macy's Day Parade and have a bowling float come on for 30 seconds. Yep. That's why they pay so much to be the Go Bowling NASCAR event because they get a bunch of bowling mentions or why they're on Fox and Friends or all these sorts of things. But now if you go to YouTube, think before YouTube. Oh, yeah. How many impressions did bowling get and how did we get them from a video standpoint? We got them through ESPN, Women's Tour, Men's Tour, 50 tour yep and then every once in a while there'd be like a clash or something on nbc yeah and there for a yeah. while you had the brunswick world team challenges and all that kind of stuff yep. but that was the video impressions that you got yep fast forward to to last year darren tang is getting 24 million impressions on facebook that's not counting his twitch or any of his social oh, media and and isn't it amazing that's how things are kept track of that's how sponsorship dollars are paid is how many clicks right how many people saw that how many different people saw that how many times was it viewed 77,000 people watched the finals of this event last year on this YouTube channel mm -hmm. 77,000 views that's why we're sitting here that's why you come to do this right because you know people are interested in it if you came up here every year and you had 12 people watching and by the end of the year a total of a thousand and twelve people it you would realize quickly okay there isn't enough interest in that right but 77,000 views you don't need any more of the proofs in the pudding there that people are interested in, in your bigger events and watching your good bowlers bowl yeah, this channel gets around 10 million views when it's cranking every mm -hmm. year, right? That's, when we're putting that's out content. That's pretty amazing, yep. Right, yep. and when you look at, when you know, the PBA posts and, and they, they put out how many people watch these shows and stuff, CBS Sports Network, I believe, is somewhere around 250,000 views on the first first go around and in the replays, of course. But I remember years ago they used to call it on TV the Nielsen ratings. Yeah. You know, it, it showed how many... How many million households were watching each given series on a week, and that's de that's what determined whether your series lived or died. You know, that's why some series were on for 15, 20 years, and others lasted six episodes yep. because nobody was interested, or a lot of people were interested. And now that that kind of rankings and rating system is on, like you say, how many clicks and how many views on YouTube. Yep, and I th I actually believe that, uh, and I'm biased. But I believe the whole YouTube space is helping bowling 
more than anything else. It, I always say, look, look at the music industry. You know, I mean, 30 years ago, if you didn't have a hit record, nobody heard of you. Correct. Whereas now, people promote themselves on YouTube, and that that's how they get noticed by music executives. And all of a sudden, I mean, look at you know Justin Bieber. Um, who's the other kid now? Um, Sean uh, Mendez. Thank you, Sean Mendez. Yes, those started out as YouTube singers and now they're two of the more popular singers in the world and yeah you really you know somebody somebody told me the other day let's do this real quick let's let's take a let's take a break from this for just a second standings after two yep. darren galbraith plus 81 brendan shramick 72 trenton holt 70 over through two games dentlinger's at 62 over gins at 46 powers at 44 let's skip down Looks like we got 23 players plus on this squad. 23 total plus. You can screenshot that if you like, or you can go to the link that I have posted in the chat room uh, at the very top that's pinned. Who'd you say was leading the squad, Mike, after two games? It is Darren Galbraith at oh, plus 81. okay, yep. Brendan Ceramic, who was second, he's got open four-bagger over there. He just stretched it into a five-bagger. Two ten conversion by Sarah Smith. He's right. made the two ten. So where were we on this before I interrupted us? I don't know. We've covered a hundred things already, Mike, and I've only been here for a game and a half. We were on. We were on how. Uh, social media has actually helped the sport of bowling, which I agree with. Yeah. I think it's helped a lot of things. One thing it, it – I'm getting deja vu all of a sudden. Maybe we discussed this at one other time when I've been in here with you. But, you know, one thing we that the Internet did and, and social media did is, you know, sometimes things that were thought to be rare – are no longer rare because there's more out there now than what you might think. And for instance, I worked with a gentleman who 20 years ago, he had six Pete Rose rookie cards. And I thought at one time he told me they were appraised at 2,000 each. Well, with the advent of all of the social media and YouTube and eBay and all of that, there's a lot more Pete Rose rookie cards out there than people thought. And then I thought he told me at one time he had them reappraised, and they were appraised at $600 each. So sometimes things, the value of things go up or down. And yeah. That's one thing, social media and, and the Internet, you know, is you, you can find anything. If you're looking for anything, just well, type it in, and you'll be able to find one for sale somewhere. There was a... There was a rookie card, and a, a, a rapper died, and he was in the front row of this rookie card for a player, and the card went up 600%. Immediately. And then the blindside parents, Michael Orr's yes. parents, who it's been a full, whole scam or whatever, oh, yeah. they're also in the in the card, so now it's gone up another 300%. Jimmy. i got to go fix this camera, and I, I'm going to finish my thought on, the, yep. uh, on where, where I was. I know where I was now. Seeing some big strings of strikes this game, Mike. A couple of really nice games going here on 13 and 14. Trenton Holtz, the left-hander that's in third place, has a really nice game going here on 13 and 14. He's got 188 in the seventh. He just left the seven pin, which he converted. 
So he's bowling really well. All right, Eric, I'm going to finish this thought. Yep. Somebody told me or mentioned to me when I told him what I kind of did with doing the PBA tour and stuff, you know, and do all the online stuff, and they go, well, what's it going to take for you to get on Fox? What's it going to take for you to get on ESPN? What's it going to take for you to get on CBS Sports you, Network? You mean you personally? Me personally. Okay. Like, they just believe that should be my goal, right? That's the next step, right, in traditional thinking. Well, it, 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 it could be, but it doesn't have to be. Right, yeah. but that's yeah. but that's what people say. Well, mm -hmm. will you call the entire tournament, and then somebody else puts in the last puzzle piece? Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. it's kind of unfair. Like people like push me like, when are you gonna be on Fox? Well, to get on Fox, you have to go through all these different channels. You gotta have training. You've gotta you know all this stuff. And Emil and I have talked about this. If he or I would ever be on Fox or something like that, this is how it would happen. We would be on site working in some other capacity, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they would say there was a huge snowstorm, and Rob Stone isn't going to be here in time. But everybody else is here to do this thing, so we need a broadcaster. And if there's not a Fox person that's within a drivable distance to get there in time, then they're going to have to pull somebody out of the crowd. And then I would imagine Emil or I, they would say, "Well, oh, Christ, I guess we'll have to go with him," <laughs> right? And that's how we would get on Fox or yeah. ESPN. That's by, how it would happen. By attrition, yeah. <laughs> okay, right? That's, that's the only chance we got. Well, you don't know that. Okay. <laughs> but oh. but what I love is what you were talking about, Justin Bieber and Shawn Mendes, right? Yes, yes. They didn't need a record company. Throw they just Colby went out Calais on, in there. They just went out on YouTube. Yeah, right. So I would rather control yep. my own network and yep. do my own thing. You call your own shots. And you, build my yep. own following. Yeah. Yep. I don't I don't I, I'm not trying to sound cocky, arrogant, or have an ego here. No, and that doesn't sell any of the major network short either. That's I would just, apples and oranges. I would just much know. rather just do this. Yeah. Like Yep. Right now I don't have anything here that I have to worry about somebody sending me a text saying can you get back to the bowling? Mm -hmm. Or, hey, you probably shouldn't be talking about that. Well, you, you, I mean, you got, I mean, this is just, this is not for setup. This is not counting the time you spent getting ready to leave the hotel. Just when you got here this morning, you got here probably 7.30. Yep. And you, I know, we know that you won't be leaving until midnight tonight. And if you're in this booth from 8.30 to 11.30, that's 15 hours, yep. you cannot only talk about bowling for 15 hours. <laughs> no, I can't. Not only can you not talk about it, but the people out there watching don't want you only talking about bowling for 15 hours. Right. <laughs> and just to put the cherry on top of this thing, how beautiful is it that when I was 12, 13 years old, really starting to fall in love with this sport, that I could, I could take a television truck I can make a television truck happen in two Pelican cases and go stream to thousands of people, you know, with my own stuff that fits in the back of my car. Yeah, yeah. It's just crazy. Yep. It's just crazy. I mean, once again, we get back to the technology and the world is changing. And, and yeah, I mean, 25 years ago to think that we'd be sitting here like this, live yeah. streaming a major tournament anywhere in the country. For could, 12 years. Yeah, I've been yeah. doing it for 12 yeah. years coming to Iowa. Yeah, yep. Not so. Not yep. so. And there are a lot of people that, you know, they're sitting at home watching bowling right now. Yeah. That wouldn't have had that opportunity 12 years ago from Iowa. And hi, Kyle Stark. Nice to see you in the chat. Mike is a beast, 15 hours in the booth, and two days of work is, is 24 hours and 24 hours. Yeah, I'll be I'll be honest, though. I I do take breaks. I talk way less than I used to during qualifying when I'm just there by myself. I make sure everything's running, working. I yeah. try to communicate what's going on, grab a guy like you to come in for a well, bit, whatever. People but people at home don't always need somebody talking there. They can just watch the bowling, too. Yeah, I mean, that's what we have the scoreboards for Yeah, and the is. links to everything. Do you remember when uh, when Sirius XM Radio first came out? Oh, yeah. There were no DJs. 
no. on any channels. No, that's what I they know. advertised. It was, yeah, it was just music. And now we're right back. Oh, they got Lisa Loeb <laughs> on Lithium, <laughs> and they got uh, Downtown oh, Julie Brown. You from, got yeah. I go back and forth on all the channels. I like all my friends tease me, but I like there isn't a genre of music that I don't like part of. And I mean, I got that clicker going when I'm on when I'm traveling all the time. And I mean, you listen to the Frank Sinatra channel. You got his ex-wife out there. Yep. What's up? You got his Frank Sinatra's ex-wife and his daughter yeah. now, now DJing, you know, channels and it's cool. And show. Yeah, I don't. You got to have somebody take you on the journey. Yeah, and you that's do. how I've always viewed yeah. this. Yep. Is is you Tell know the story. Yeah. Yep. Hey everybody, here's our latest hit here from Jasmine Snell. She's about to bowl on lane 13. Enjoy. You know, I think that's really <laughs> what it is. It, yeah. <laughs> you know. So. Yeah, Trenton, uh, the gentleman that was in third place. Just shot 247, so he may no longer be in third place. However, Brendan Ceramic's got a good game going down there. He's possible 257, and he's in second. Dentlinger just split in a tenth. Mm. He, on, had, he, had two, he had 250 going. And, and if you look at his game, Mike, what did we say this morning? That's the modern yeah. way I see a 6-3. Six, 6-3, three, six, three, double, 9 whiff. whiff. And now this, he could he He'll could probably have, make this. Yeah. <laughs> He'll probably, yeah. This is what I call another one of those spares that you, you're still going to miss it more than you make it because it's a precision <laughs> shot, but it's one of them spares that you're going to make it your fair share of we're times. We're going to bounce over here, here so you can actually see Dentlinger on the right-hand side of your screen. He's throwing at this split. That's what we're talking yep. about. 3-6 or 3-4-6-7 mm -hmm. is how that's supposed to be I called. I bet he makes it. Hey. Oh, oh, man. I was almost right, Mike. <laughs> but that's why you're going to miss it more than you're going to make it, because you can still throw it good and not get it. So he, Dave has three opens and, what, nine <laughs> strikes? Two ten. No, five. Yep. five yep. Seven strikes out of ten yeah. Out of ten shots. He only didn't Crazy. strike three times and shot two ten because he had a double and a five-bagger. Yeah, that theoretical cut on this squad, what did it do, Mike? If you look between 18th and 19th, it's at 13 and 14. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I think the cut number is going to be like around, what, 10? Somewhere. I, it, it, maybe it creeps a little higher. I don't know. I got one of the guys that I that I coach sitting at plus 7, so I'd like to see it plus 7. I don't know if that's enough. And it's funny, the same gentleman was on the bubble all day long at the 11th frame, too. But then he bowled really good on Sunday and finished 12th. This tournament, it's harder to do that because you've got seven games today and you only have six tomorrow. Yeah. Whereas, you know, the 11th frame, you've got six, but then if you make the cut, you have 12 plus the bonus pins. It's easier to fly up the standings at the 11th frame. Yeah, it's crazy. Jeff Jeff calls that the Flanagan format. Yep. He was, ta he was yes. talking to me about that event, you know, many moons ago. and. You suggested he, that. He goes, I'm looking for something for Sunday. I really yeah. don't know what to do. And I said, well, yep. here's the cool thing, dude. That's your baby. Why don't you just make it as many games? You can you can alter the amount of games if you use this format. Mm -hmm. So if people get out of there too late, just cut a couple games just off. Just cut right? it to eight or ten, yeah. Because you no longer have to bowl a certain amount of people. You're bowling everybody every game. Yep, and really 12 is, is not that many games on Sunday because you start at 930 and you finish at about 330. It goes at about a half an hour a game pace and and you get a ton of games in yeah yeah and all day long it could be like a roller coaster oh if yeah if you come in and get lined up on sunday you can go from at the bottom of the barrel to the step yep. ladder and that's happened every single year dakota who won it this year he only made the cut by i think 12 pins okay the year adam morse won it he qualified 41st and his first six games were 250 and he went from 41st to leading in six games this event that's not going to happen as easily on Sunday because, you know, less games and no bonus pins. Yep. But that's why that tournament is unique. I mean, yes, Saturday is as important as anything because if you don't bowl good on Saturday, you don't get to Sunday. But when you get to Sunday, it's a free-for-all. 
I'm going to stream the event next year. I was asked to do it this year, but I, but I was moving. Oh, good. So I couldn't I do it. I go to that every year, too. So. Yeah, yep. I'm going to go stream that one next year. I just, uh, last week, Team USA trials opened up, and the guys' division sold out in less than an hour. Did it really? Yeah. Yeah, by 11 o'clock, it opened at 10 o'clock our time, and by 11 it was sold out. That seems so bizarre to me. Because there's really no money in it. There is, I always say there's no financial dividend. I mean, they pay the top four, like 500, 300, 200, yeah. or 100. So there's no financial dividend. But we don't do everything in life for immediate financial return. I tell everybody that is a great experience bowling that event. It's got a lot of pros in it. It's got a lot of your top amateurs in the country. It's got a lot of your top younger collegiate bowlers or high school bowlers. It's just a fantastic opportunity. And who doesn't want to go to Las Vegas in December and January? <laughs> so, um, but it is a great experience bowling that. I mean, a, a, that level of competition. I mean, that's that's how you that's how you get better. That's the big events. You know, these events. And, Junior Gold and all the all the big events you you broadcast on this, you know, your holiday doubles. You, yeah. you know, I mean, <laughs> that one's pretty nuts. Yeah, I mean, look at I don't seriously, I don't know, and I've only been going to holiday doubles for a few years, but I don't know if there's an event in the nation that draws that much talent on one weekend. Yeah, it, it, it's absolutely incredible. Everybody is there. I mean, and I mean, he even expanded last year. He added another squad. I and know. It, it was, it, it, he could probably add two more squads and fill them, you know. Not that that's going to happen, but, I mean, it's unbelievable. You have 500 bowlers almost. Yeah. It's a who's who of bowling. Uh, on a house shot. Yes. And everybody wants to be a part of it because the money's good. And, again, everybody wants to bowl against the good bowlers. That's what makes tournament bowling fun. I actually, in, in nowadays... And this is no offense to this event or any other events out there, but I would much rather call the action on a house shot in an amateur tournament. I just would. It's way more fun, you way know, more entertaining. You know, Mike, along those lines, you know, our greater Iowa's, we were on house shots. This is our 32nd year. This is, ironically, I don't know if you saw this or not, last uh, at the 11th frame, um, Joe and Rosie and Jen and myself took a picture because this is my 25th anniversary I did see that year now. of running the Greater Iowa Scholarship Bowling Tour, and this is their 25th anniversary of running the adult versions of that, the Greater Iowa's. And we were on house shots for years and years and years, and we never had any problem selling our events out. Right. Um, and we went to Sports Shot about six years ago, and we're still drawing great entries, but... What I told everybody all those years we bowled on a house shot is we had an excitement factor. Every game, somebody had seven, front eight, front oh, nine. Yeah. The, the action, and I mean, it was incredible, you know, watching all of that. Well, now that we're on sports shots, it's still exciting, but it's a different type of excitement, you know? Anytime the scoring is, I mean, and I don't know this for a fact, but I'm sure you've heard stuff too, but, you know, some of these, the PBA titles, when they get them on some of the really hard patterns and then they get to the TV show, I'm not sure people at home enjoy watching the pros shooting 140s and 150s. No. Um, no. Nope. I mean, because I don't, and, I, and the reason for that is I don't think, and, and again, I don't want to sell anybody short, but I think there's a lot of league bowlers out there and a lot of bowlers that aren't at this level that don't understand that. I remember when I, when I shot my very first 800, I was 25 years old, and the people in my office said, well, Eric, why don't you go on tour? You bowl bigger scores than what those guys do. And I said, you have no idea what they're bowling on and the lights and the money and the pressure and the crowds. So, I mean, people can't relate to that when they see a pro on Whoa. TV shoot 140. Almost had another 710. Did that bounce over right in front of it? it no, it like slid over. Oh, geez. Yeah, it's like slid so, yeah, over. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying about calling the action on a house shot. I mean, in, a, in a perfect world, okay, I guess in a perfect world, 
on the PBA tour, the PWBA, or whatever. And I'm just thinking out loud right now. This is not something I put a lot of constructive thought into. But let's just say first place pays a hundred grand. Mm -hmm. I think at the end of qualifying, sixty percent of the prize fund should be awarded based off of how you qualified. And then on TV, you bowl for the rest of the money. You, you might be on to something there, Mike. I remember you and I were in the booth a couple of years ago talking, and you said, you, you said, I got an idea for a tournament. And you said, let's have one, let's have three blocks, and you bowl one on a dead, flat, one-to-one, -one impossible pattern, and then you bowl one on the biggest wall of China. And then you can pick what would you pick for that third block, you know? Right, yeah. So, I mean, that's part of what kind of, that's the fun part of our game is discussing lane patterns and strategies and what's fair and what's not fair. And I guess the answer to that is it's no different than any other sport. Your definition of fair might be different than mine, you know? And it depends on what day, too. I mean... The bottom line there is if you bowl enough tournaments in your lifetime and if you have a lot of success, that means you are a good bowler. And if you bowl a lot of tournaments and don't have a lot of success, it isn't because the patterns didn't fit your game. Yeah. It's because you probably just weren't quite good enough, you know. I tried my luck at bowling PBA events, and guess what? I just wasn't good enough. That's a fact. That That's not an opinion. You know, if, I, if, if, you know. if we were up here playing like a fantasy game, right, or if there was betting, and, and let's just say you took a really great group of bowlers, okay, and you told everybody at home they are going to bowl the first day on a, on a house condition, and then they're done. Then they come in the second day, and they bowl on a sports shot. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to bowl, and then you're going to take the top five for the stepladder Sunday night at 7 o'clock. 12 games on each or something. Burn everything. Just burn. Mm -hmm. Just bowl. Everybody bowls at the same time. <laughs> Whatever, right? Let's not do all these different squads, right? Yeah. Bowl yeah. like 12 or 16 games a day or something yep. goofy. All right? I'm going to tell you right now that there are going to be some guys that are going to finish in the top 10 on the sports shot and in the lower third of the field on the house shot. And you know what? I don't think they're a good bowler. And it's going to happen the other way, too. And if that happens, I yeah. don't think they're a good bowler. Yeah. Who's a good bowler? It doesn't matter if it's a house shot or whatever. It does not matter. It, none of that matters. Nobody and you know who only it, bowls good when they're easy or only bowls good when they're hard. Tim Barrett, St. Louis guy, he bowled this morning, did not bowl well. bowler, okay. yes. He was always the guy I mentioned in St. Louis that he would show up if it's on something tough and be in the top five, and if it was on a house shot, he'd be in the top five. Yep. And then there were several bowlers in St. Louis that if you put out anything tough, you, they couldn't crack an egg, but they were always in it on the house shots. Mm -hmm. And then there were a handful of guys that bowled great on sport and just bitched the whole time. <laughs> They're bowling on a house shot. I yep. just bowled 210. 210, I just shot 630, and so-and-so shot 840, and they're yep. so fried between yep. the ears. They need some mental bowling need strategy help. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think well, the most complete bowler is somebody that can that can bowl on a 20-to-1 on a shot or 25-to-1 ratio yep. all the way down to the U.S. Open 1-to-1. One one. And when I, when I was in the prime of my career, yes, Mike, I had a prime. But anyway, <laughs> it didn't last very long, but... When I bowled competitively, I always said I'd rather see him challenging because the strengths of my game were spare shooting and kind of I, I, I was pretty versatile. I could, I could do some different things with it because I didn't have a lot of physical talent, so I had to make up for that. So my, my choice was I would love to bowl when they're hard, but yet I had some amazing tournaments when they were walled up sky high because... No good bowler only bowls good when they're hard or only bowls good when they're easy. That's right. You know, you got to be able to do it all. 
You have yeah. to be, I agree. Yeah. You got to be able to do it all. There's some conditions where you camp out around the pocket and you, and you get your spares and the scoring pace is low. And there's other conditions where you better be lined up throwing some strikes or you're going to be a mile off the cash, let alone the finals. I always love those 16-game house shot tournaments with no re-oil. Yep. Look at uh, because they're so walled in games 12 through 16. No, the lefties all do better in games I was 12 through 16. Just going to say that's where you know some could argue, and I don't think it's an argument. I think it's a fact that on a lot of house shots, because the right side, you know, just for sheer numbers, it's nothing against any lefty. It's just through sheer numbers that there's more play on the. You know, on the right side, so the fronts get burned up, and then yeah. the left side still, still nice and nice and juicy later in the day. You know, the more games you bowl, that but happens. the lefties can't move in. They have to ball down and stay in the same spot because if they move in, they get right-handers lay down yes. and hooks at their toes. And that's again, that's no fault of theirs because I know a lot of good lefties that are capable of playing in, but on that kind of stuff, you can't because the ball hooks at their feet. Exactly. You know. You know, it's it's like the pro golf tour. I mean, a lot of your players that win the U.S. Open at plus two or minus four or whatever, they've won tournaments where 25 under wins. Yeah. yeah. It's all a product of what you're on. You know, if you if you uh, and I, people always ask me and they ask you and they ask Joe, what do you think the number is going to be? What do you think the cut's going to be? And the first thing I always tell them, especially my bowlers that ask me that, what do you think the cut's going to be? You saw the pattern specs. And I said, well, regardless of if, if it's 100 over or 70 under, if you're bowling good, you'll get to the number. Yep. So the number basically is irrelevant. It's, it's how good you're bowling. I well, mean, we'll the, if you took away this right side column, Mike, all that really matters is where your position where your in the position, tournament is. I know. That score, that's, that's that, that, the only yeah, reason right. we keep that is that's how we keep track of where you're standing. Right, exactly. Is. But that number is irrelevant in right. any tournament you yeah, ever bowl. No, you're, I, I, <laughs> amen, brother. <laughs> Hey, a uh, little reset here. Mike Flanagan here with you, bringing you continuing coverage of the 2023 Evan I Fall Classic. I'm joined by special guest Eric Liddick. He's nice enough to come sit in with me as uh, he's an Iwoni, Iwo, Iowanian, Iwo, Iowan, Iowan, Iowan. Iowan. He's an Iowan and has been an Iowan for a long time. So um, appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, we want to thank Evan I for being the title sponsor. And uh, we are in game number four of seven now of B-Squad qualifying. C-Squad qualifying coming up at 7 o'clock here tonight. Should start on time. Yep. Um, 42 feet in length oil pattern. I know some people are interested in that. I'll just pop it up really quick. There is the oil pattern, 42 feet in length, 26 milliliters of oil. It's a 2.38 to 1 on the left, a 2.2 something there, 5, 8 something to 1 on the right. And uh, it's playing a lot like the uh, USBC Open Championships pattern from team event, so most people are saying. So there's our, uh, there's our reset for everybody at home. And now I'm going to check in on the chat. Jizbits. Many yep. great memories. Uh-oh, who said that? Bo Bruning. Bo Bruning and his mom and dad, Shar, Cher, and John from Wisconsin. Bo Bruning had a lot of success in our tournaments. Yep. Hi, Bo. Yep. He was a very good player. I don't. I think he still bowls. I haven't seen, haven't seen Bo in a long time. As I said earlier, I've run those tournaments 25 years, and we've, I've probably, I have the exact number at home. I don't have it with me, but I believe just since I started running them, um, there have been over 2,300 bowlers, bowler tournaments. I need you, I need you to bring my stats. <laughs> okay, so here, <laughs> we're going to start laughing about this because, um, Actually, the gentleman I talked about earlier that I got a guy on the cut line plus seven. 
is Spencer Worthman, and he was just standing here. He brought me the water. He, he stayed yeah. with me. Yeah. He came up with me. And his older brother, Bobby Worthman, was the one oh, that yeah. won the tournament that you finished second at. And, Bobby, I was just talking to him on the phone the other day, and he said, he said, oh, my God, he says, you and Flanagan are going to tell that story again, aren't you? <laughs> and I said, we get around to it sometimes. Well, every once in a while I have to let people know that I used to be an okay bowler. <laughs> yeah. Mike, I say the same thing. I says, I haven't bowled in 11 years. I don't golf anymore hardly. I said, nobody could know by watching this fat 61-year-old throw a shot in my tennis shoes with somebody else's ball that I ever used to be pretty good. Not By my standards, I was pretty good. I wasn't a, I wasn't a great bowler, but I was a pretty good bowler. And like you say, it's, you know, when you don't do it as anymore or don't do it as much, it's you have to remind people once in a while that you could bowl. I finished second a lot, man. Well, it sucked. When you well, it it sucks at the time, but when you look back on it, you know, second's a pretty good place to be. It's kind of like I said earlier, we finished we finished second. Yeah, it was disappointing to not win, to come up a little bit short of your dream, but every other team in the nation would have loved to have been second. Yeah. You know? The so. Hard Illinois Youth Classics, man. I oh, I, yeah. I had success in those, though. Yep. Yep, I took kids down to there too. And, uh, any, you know, any any scholarship tournament you go to, there's plenty of talent there. It ain't easy to win any scholarship tournament because you got to be – you've got a lot of talent there. I had more fun bowling those events, and the, I think I bowled two of your events. Two or three, yep. Yeah, yep. and uh, I had more fun bowling those than my local ones. Well, that's be why people – that's why you came four because it was five just, hours. It was just more fun to go to a place – where they're like, who's this guy? Yeah. Right? Like, who's the, who's this guy? Who's this guy that just came in and took most of our money? Yeah, who, you know? <laughs> who's this guy that just showed up, right? Yep. Like, I don't know who we, it is, but he's in second place if you look at the standings. We don't know, you know? if he's any good. Well, it didn't right? take him long to find out you were. <laughs> yeah. It was, I mean, those were those were fun. I really wanted a banner, though. So bad. <sighs> Bobby Worthman. I should have broke his leg. Yep. Should have Tanya Harding them. Because <laughs> I mean, I, I still, I, we've said this many times, but that event, I was, a, I was, I was ahead of third, yes, you. by a lot, and I was out of first by, by even lot. more. Well, but again, that's why. And there's Bobby's brother he staring was at us right he, now. He was cheating. He well, had people throwing pins in the back. <laughs> but again, that's why it's hard to win because there's only one winner. And most tournaments that you're ever going to bowl in your life, you've got bowlers that are going to finish second, third, even, you know, fourth, maybe a little lower than that, that bowled good enough to win that day, that really had their best stuff. But there's only one winner. It doesn't mean you you you, you lost. I think you know. I averaged like 227 or 228. And like behind me was a 218 average. And he was at about 235. Higher. Maybe more. I think yeah. he was at like 241. Yep, yep. I mean, ridiculous, this mm -hmm. guy. Wasn't it his house? That's where he learned how to bowl. Yeah, that's yep. the problem. Yep. That's the damn. You shouldn't let people bowl <laughs> Anybody, these tournaments. Yeah. Throw out uh, any, any home bowler, throw them out. Yeah, yep. I'm not allowing it anymore. <laughs> All right, uh, we got standings after three. We got a tie for the lead now. Oh. Brendan Stramick and Trenton Holes. They both bowled big games last game. Yeah. One seventeen over. Now I think we only had one bowler bowl seven hundred the last set. After three, let me pull that up. I have it right here. It's a race, Mike, to see who can get there first. One oh seven. Yes. Yeah. And in ninety nine earlier after three games, mm -hmm. we got one seventeen, one seventeen, and ninety five. So it's not that far off. No, we yeah, have uh, on this squad we have 24 plus. And the first squad we had 21. Okay. So theoretically, if you take 18th place after three games, it was plus nine. This morning it's a little higher than that now is what it looks like. Yep. It's, what is it, 22 or 24 there, 24? Well, 19th is 21. And 19th this morning was plus 7 after three games. Yep. So a little bit higher. But, again, I'm not ready to say I, one I or the other. I always say B squad's the, the, the strongest almost every time. Um, I, think this, I think this tournament, all three squads are pretty good. Okay. I, Joe and I were talking about that. Um, 
all three squads are very good this tournament. I, I don't think there's a super weak squad. Typically, you're right. A or B tend to be the stronger squad, but C is really good tonight, too. So it'll be interesting to see what this number does throughout the day. So we got day. Ceramic Holes, Tippett, Dentlinger, Gens, Powers. Ryan Tippett pulling good, yeah. Purdue, Fisher, Rhodes, Stone, Andy Stone, not his wife. Mm -hmm. Laura, I don't think she's having a good event right now. Or maybe, no, 50th right now. Mm -hmm. Andy's another one I bowled against in those hard Illinois youth classics. Yep. That's how I met him. He bowled some greater Iowa's too. Jason, did. Jason Guest, Scott Wolwin. Yep. Rinkenbergers, Greg Fisher, Chris Ferguson. Yep. Matt Wegen. Matt's still bowling. Still uh, lighting him up in Muscatine. <laughs> yeah, that guy. You talk about unorthodox. Yeah, he's he's the Scott Devers. Yep, but when he can that. when he gets lined up, oh my goodness, he can strike. He just shot another big 800 the other night in league. I was looking to see. Did Chris Van Ackeren bowl your stuff? He did not. I don't know that name. Interesting. What are you looking at there? What are you just seeing? What I've, I've got. One of my college a bowler on my team bowling, and he's in 26th right now, minus six. And Brendan, who's tied for the lead, Brendan Sram bowling right in front of us. We talked strategy earlier in the day to stay right as long as he could, and he, he got plus 117 out of that. That's pretty but, good. But as you can see, this game here, you know, 53 in the fourth, and that's when I looked out there and I was waving my hands furiously. It was time to move left, and he was already ahead of me, getting ready to change balls and make the move. So we were both on the same page there, and now he's got a double after that 53. Because this is a pattern I don't think you really wanted to inch your way in. When the, when the outside went away, you just want to make that big jump. I know this is probably impossible, and I think we may have talked about this already on a prior broadcast. As I really am losing my mind, but now that I'm thinking about all these things, I'm wondering. It's it's impossible to to to, to get everyone to do it, but how amazing would it be to have a reunion tournament for your organization? We we actually did that in our 15th anniversary season, which was 17 years ago. We didn't have a big turnout, and I think I think the main reason is just because, you know, there's, you know, there wasn't any money involved, and it's hard to get people to drive three and four and sometimes five or six hours, you know, just to hang out with people, you know? I mean, no, I agree. It, it could work, but, you know... You know, I, I'd have to think about this. It sure would be a lot of fun, wouldn't it, Mike? What I think would be really cool, and I, look, again, I'm thinking out loud. All right, this is just a thought out loud. But how great would it be if everybody had to pay, like, a small entry fee mm -hmm. or whatever it is, 100 bucks or something, yeah. whatever, yeah. 150 I don't know, and included, like, some drinks and stuff yeah, a meal, for a night maybe, party or, or something, yeah, right? Yeah, okay. yep. But what if you could? What if you could figure out a way to do it, where you made it into more like a a team thing? Now I'm gonna explain where I'm going with this. You would have to break out Iowa into several sectors, because that's the home base. Yep. So you know you got the Northeast or whatever you have. I don't know Iowa, so I don't even want to stretch to even think. But let's say you had three separate. Uh, divisions that are Iowa divisions, okay? So if you grew up in that area or however you deem this, this would be a lot of work on your end, so I'm putting a lot of work on your, your end. But what would happen is is you would have anybody that showed up from that pool of players, their scores are eligible to be used for their specific area. Mm -hmm. The Missouri guys... We could come up, and our scores are combined, but we only take, like, the top five or top four qualifying scores or something like that, okay? 
Illinois. You could figure out Illinois. Minnesota. All these different. And then you could say, okay, we had a few people come from Utah or Colorado or Idaho. All of those people are together in their division. And you kind of figure this out to where if all of a sudden I want bragging rights from Missouri, I start calling people that I know bold these events from Missouri. Hey, Mike Ramoklis. Yeah. We got I'm going to go bold this thing. Will you come yep. up? Hey, Solovic. Yep, he bold. Hey, Zarnicky. Hey, Yep, I don't even. I, I don't even know Spencer Robars. Did Spencer bowl your events? He did not. Nope. Well, that sucks. Well, <laughs> his I, his I, mom actually emailed me. Susan emailed me. Man. we just talked about this. You'd have a to give me. Ago. You'd have to. So you, what you would do is you. And I'm sorry to interrupt, but yeah, just let me finish fine. this. Yep. You would basically find find a champion or a person, not a champion that's won the event, but a person that's going to champion their state or mm -hmm. their sector. Yeah. And and you would give them the list of everybody that's eligible from their area. And they could go and say go to, go to work on this. Yep. Right. And I would represent Missouri, and I would get as many bowlers that bowled your events from Missouri to come bowl your mm -hmm. thing, mm -hmm. and we would have prize money available to us. Mm -hmm. But it would be more about the bragging. Just like we talked about Team USA. Why do you bowl that? It's not for the money. It's no. for the Team USA right. deal, right? Yep, yep. Well, we could come to your event. Yeah, there's a little money if you do well. But we're going to represent our state and say Missouri took this thing home or and you know, Illinois took it home. And and believe me, you're, I have never really thought of it in that perspective. But, but I have thought many times over the years about, you know, what, you know, up as far as a banquet at night or a party at night or a cookout or just to get, you know, get the old gang back together, you know. But there's always an old gang, and that old gang keeps changing throughout mm -hmm. the years. I yeah. mean, you know, 20 years, 25 years ago almost, when you were bowling our events, there were very few other major scholarship tournaments in the Midwest. Right. And... Now, fast forward 20 years later, every state has their own scholarship tour, and many, many states have multiple scholarship tours. Well, and then you have other scholarship tours like the EYTs that draw from multiple states, you know, and the SYCs and the PBA juniors and that. So 25 years ago, we got everybody. Everybody came to the Greater Iowa because yeah. we had the whole party. Right. Whereas now bowlers rather than travel to different ones we still get them from all over don't don't get me wrong but we don't get as many instead now what we get is a lot of in-state high school bowlers and a lot of the collegiate bowlers that that go to st ambrose or mount mercy or william penn or those schools so the demographic just changes changes where you pull your entries from yeah sure but back then you had bowlers from all over traveling a long way we had um melissa hurst who became melissa peters who unfortunately passed away a couple years ago her and her mom kathy they came to 49 of our tournaments and that was a seven to nine hour drive every month for them yeah and she came, they came 49 times because they made friends and she was darn good she won nine of our events i believe but she was a good bowler, and they love traveling, and they love the crowd that they competed with, and that's what it's all about at the end of the day. It's not only about winning. Right. Winning's yeah. fun, but you got to have fun when you don't well, win. Well, I'm just telling you, I'll, you bring my, I'll bring my Missouri crew. I'll get them all up there, and we will beat well, you, everybody. Well, you had – you. Bobby, had, Bobby Worthman, he holds out, no huh? chance. <laughs> no out. chance against this. <laughs> I'm kidding. But. He he had. Uh, and Joe he, Roseman has the bowl. Joe. <laughs> okay. He can still bowl. And we he can't do it at Miller anywhere. time. We can't do yeah. it at Miller time. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah you, it you, ain't going there. You just said. You just said. You know, Steve Salovic, Mike Salovic, David Zarnecki. You know, um, Mike Ramaklis. You those guys could all bowl. You know. It's not like they forgot how to bowl. That's right. a pretty talented and I think that, group. That's kind of the only only crew that really came up, right? There was a few other guys um, down there, but but there weren't I as many. I think we brought Mike Loring one time. That name rings a bell. He, he passed yeah. away also. Oh, did he? Yeah, oh, cancer. I didn't hear that. Cancer oh, got that's him, yeah. too bad. Yeah, it was bad. Mm. It's been a long time, actually. Mm. I hadn't heard that. 
But I'd love to have a tribute to some of these people like Mel and, and Chris Ferguson and, and Loring, and that's just to name a few, of the oh, few yeah. that I know. The well, few. one thing you experience when, you know, when you get older, more, you know, more people that have been in your life are no longer in your life. Well, that's just a fact of getting older. You know? Yeah. Anyway, that was a nice trip down memory lane. Yep. Let's see what we got here. Um, Ryan says McNeil, Boss, Dole, Morrison, Stansbury, Roseman. Don't forget the best tournament director in the Midwest. I don't know if I'd agree with it. Ryan is bringing uh, Jesse Buss, Mike Dole, Chris Morrison, and Nick Thomas to bowl. That's a pretty good collection and there from nothing, the Rockford nothing area. Nothing compared to who I'm bringing. <laughs> I just need a list of all Missourians that have ever bowled your events. <laughs> I have that. I can't believe I don't have Robars in my back pocket. I thought for sure I had him. Nope. Nope. That sucks. Well, the the Kansas connection was, you know, not as big, but it was also good, too. With did, Bo, did Mo, Bo McVeigh bowl? No. Nope. He bowled some HOIYCs. Mm. Yeah, Ky did Kyle Sherman bowl any of your events? He won one. Oh, I got him on my team. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yep. Brad Miller, did he bowl? No. Damn. Nope. Damn. Kyle Sherman, I think, only bowled one, and he won it. Oh, I'm recruiting. Yeah. I'm yep. recruiting that, right now. That qualifies. <laughs> that, that qualifies. <laughs> and to those that don't understand what the hell we're talking about, Eric <laughs> runs these tournaments. Greater Iowa Scratch, what is it, Scratch? Greater Iowa Scholarship Bowling Tour. That's what it is. Yeah, you mentioned Scott Wall and his mother and father. Unfortunately, his father passed away in December. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, Ron did. I yeah. did not know that. Yeah. And Scotty just had some major health problems that he's recuperating from, too, right now. Um, but they founded it in 1992. Don and Cheryl Wolin, and they had some help along the way. There's quite a few people that were helping them. And then I took over along with Rob and Linda Roseman in 1999. And then in 2003, uh, Brooke Flanagan and her mom, Patty Hale, started helping. And now they've been, this is my 25th year, and they've been with me for 21 of those years. So, yeah, it's... It's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun, and the people you meet along the way, that's the whole the whole fun of it all. That, watching all this outstanding young talent that comes along. You know what, Eric, an hour ago is where I, I started going with this, and I never even finished m my thought. Are you saying we I got finally, off on I more finally, tangents? I finally, figured, I, probably, I finally figured out why all this even came up. I was talking about moving. Yeah. Yep. That was well over an hour ago. Oh, yeah, it was. Yep. And this whole thing started because I was about to tell you before I went over the damn standings <laughs> that I was, when you move, you dig through all your old stuff. Oh, yeah. I you filled do. up 140 Costco tubs. I went to Costco and bought those. 140, the yellow ones? Yeah, the black and yellow yes, ones. Yeah. 140. And they stack beautifully in the back of my yes. budget truck. Yeah. Okay. So get this. I'm pulling out all my old standing sheets, all my old stuff. And do you remember the publication called, like, the Top Stars, YABA Top Stars? It was always in the back of the book. No, it was, a, it was a pamphlet. Oh. It was a trifold pamphlet. That and it I would don't show remember. all of the high, all the 300 games in the country mm -hmm. year to date at YABA. And you have some of them. Oh, I have some of oh, those. Oh, that would be neat to watch. And Barb, Barb Spigner. Yep actually posted oh that would be neat to see one of these you know i'm a historian a statistic statistician i love all that old stuff barb posted this she tagged me in it i'm a pack rat mike i don't throw anything away either i keep a bunch of stuff so but i don't remember those i don't know how far back i have to go here it's been about a month she posts a lot, which is fortunate but unfortunate. Oh, and remind me, there's something special I want to do here in a minute as well. That I haven't done yet that I've been meaning to. I was going to save it for tomorrow, but I might do it both days. I saw you had an episode of the Windy City Bowling News there. 
the yeah. now defunct publication. That was around for many, many, many years. That was a good one. Yes, it was. I'm going to find this. June 20. Let me look at that standing. Yep, real you get in there. Here. You get in grab there. it from you, yep. It, it feels like she posted this like last week, but I'm back into June and it's not there yet. You'll know it when you see it there immediately, it is. though, won't Here you? it is. Oh, yeah, okay. All right, here we go. Now, what's the date on there, does it say? Uh, so. Oh, my God, I just saw Richard Allen. He was 14 Okay, so old. she said, in co when COVID hit in 2020, I broke my foot in the summer of 2021 and had to go through the mini boxes of memorabilia we have. So on Wednesdays, I post something from way back when. This week's way back when photo is from the Young American Bowling Alliance, YBA. It's their list of nation's top 10 scores from the 93-94 season. This so week, 20, I'm featuring some, 30 years ago. some very rec recognizable names that were on the 300 list. Jim Pritz, Chris Sand. Jimmy Pritz was a PBA champion. Other recognizable names. Vernon Peterson, Chris Schlimmer, Chuck Huckleberry, Jason Milligan, Kevin Winters. So on this list. You're going to have to zoom in on that. And this might have been a different one. She tagged me. Some of the names you see in here is just like all these people work in the industry. She had. Uh, well, if they were 20 then, they're 50 now. Tyler. That was 30 years ago. So maybe she's got a different one. Maybe I was tagged in a different one. But this is the publication and what it looked like. Mm -hmm. I think it might have been a different one. But Tyler Jensen and myself and, like, Bill O'Neill, Mike Fagan, all these wow. names. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like. <laughs> oh, here it is. Way back Wednesday. 93, 94 season, yep. Yeah, you've got, uh, I recognize Vernon Peterson, who had two 300s, Corey Kistner, uh, Jason Guest, uh, Nick Hoagland, yeah. Brent Prentice, yep. uh, me, like Todd Todd Filter, yep. Robert Eddy, Andrew Kane, Andrew and Kane, oh Ted Pritz, yeah. all of us. Oh, Dick Allen. Yep. Richie Allen, 15 years old. Yeah. Right? Like, it's just it's crazy looking at this thing. Well, but there again, you've got it from 30 years ago, and those bowlers were in love with the game of bowling, and so many of them 30 years later are still in love with the game of bowling. They're involved in different Chris aspects. Ferguson, 13 years old, Peoria, Illinois. Peoria, yep. Yep, pretty wild, pretty yeah. wild. That was cool. So, yeah, Barb's been finding this stuff. But that was the publication. It looked just like and this. And you have some of those in yeah, your totes, huh? I have about ten of them. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, there's probably a lot of names in there that, you know, you and I and some other people would recognize, but a lot of people wouldn't recognize Absolutely. a lot of those names. You know? Clay Herbach, Jake oh. Peters. Yep. Team USA members, great bowlers. Jake's a PBA national champion. Well, Mike, now's about the time. Oh, there's another really good game up there going on 11 and 12. Mm -hmm. Right, right yeah. in front of us. Yep. I don't. It, that might be Ryan Powers, and he's fairly high in the standings, isn't he? After three games, I think Ryan's up there. Sixth, yeah, plus 66. Well, he's he's going to be higher than that this game, it looks like. If, if Yeah, that's him. Yep, working on 279. This is, we're past the midway point of this squad now because this is finishing up game four out of seven. We're doing pretty good on time, actually. Yeah, we're going to stay on schedule. We were only a few minutes and I, and late I, getting started on B squad, and that's because one bowler didn't show up, so they had a replacement here, yeah. and they had to allow her time to, to change clothes and get ready to bowl, so they gave her a few minutes for that. So, they, so there's from basically an hour and a half left of bowling for this squad, right? Yeah. Five, yep. six, seven, a little, and a half. little over a half an hour a game, yeah. Yep. So we should be done right around six. Yeah, yep. 
The next squad starts at 7. Yep. Yeah, that proverbial bubble that every tournament you ever bowl in in your entire life, you know, there's a theoretical bubble of what it's going to take to cash or what it's going to take to make the finals. And, and, you know, there's people that finished bowling, you know, four hours ago, and, and they're kind of, am I going to make it? Am I not going to make it? And after this squad, you, you would think you would have a better idea what that bubble might be, but not necessarily. <laughs> Like you and I were talking before this squad started that, you know, seven over was definitely in the game. Is it going to be enough? We don't know. I mean, look, if you look at the standings here on this squad right now, after three games, you would say, no, it's not going to be enough. But we know how that can change throughout the day and throughout the next squad, too. Tell you what, Ryan Powers got it going on. I'm 279. Oh, he's, he punched out in the tenth. I didn't see it. Yep. I was too busy yammering. Yep. yep. Well, we all know Ryan can vote. Flushed, Ryan finished second in this tournament two years ago. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, we know he can bowl. Anytime he's up toward the top of the standings, it's not a surprise. Very good player. Very versatile player. He can play where he wants. Well, Eric, what's what's your what's your plan here? Are you sticking with me for a while? You I got leaving? nothing going. Yep. Because this is about the time that I personally stretch my legs. Do it. Get ready to go into the next game. You, you going to stay up here? Yeah. You I'll good? Just, I'll hang loose for a little while. All right. I'm going to let this uh, last shot here go. And then uh, I guess they're still in game. Yeah. They're, some of the pairs here. are just. Yeah. They got a couple frames, two or three frames left. It looks like on the low end of the center. Two or three frames left in game four here. All right, so we'll go out of here. We'll go down there. Game four. Just Eric. I'll be back in okay. two or three minutes. All right. Josh Kennedy here on lane seven, throws another strike. He's got a possible 232. And he needs it because he's minus 17 right now. Josh Zilk here up on the right lane on lane eight. Oh, he's had four splits this game, oh my goodness. He's plus, he was plus 12 before that game. He's not going to be plus 12 anymore. Right, yeah, it looks like the entire high end is done with there. Done with there fourth game. It's just the low end here that is just finishing up game four. was the young lady I talked about just a moment ago. She was the replacement for the gentleman who didn't show up. That one looks like it's a little wide, and it is a 2-8. The, the fill ball, Josh, Zilk had three strikes that game, one of which was the fill ball, but he had 
Four splits and another seven count. And as I always say the field ball always strikes. Garrett Meadows up here. Chance to shoot a nice game, and he is sitting at plus plus 28 in 13th place. Oh my goodness. Right through the face. I couldn't, I, it looked like he liked that shot. Had a chance to shoot 236 and he needs to spare this to be in, at, in the two teens. Josh Kennedy gets the first one in the 10th. Minus 17. Now, if he punches here, he can go go to plus 15. I got a hunch Garrett might make this, and he did. Slid it right over there. So now he can strike for 216 to take him to plus 44. up awful quick here to not waste any time there to shoot the next one in the 10th. And trips out the 4-9. Chance to shoot 232. Two fifteen for Garrett Meadows. That takes him to plus 43. Another solid game here, a chance to shoot 227 here on lane five. And he does. Punches out for 232. Okay, we're in the final frame, it looks like, of game four. Yeah, I just I had a gentleman here talking about the scoring pace, and I agree, the scores might go down in game four. This morning, I, I said that this morning the pace after game three went down. Game three it went up. After game three it started to, to settle a little bit and it'll be interesting to see if that happens. That happens on this squad. Sometimes B squad comes in here having watched, having gotten here in time to watch A squad so they theoretically as a group have a little better idea what they saw didn't work and what did work. Not with everybody, but collectively as a group, it seems like that happens a lot of times.
Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be close to see if if B Squad finishes around six o'clock. It, it's gonna be pushing it. I think it's gonna be more toward quarter after. stepped out. So I got this whole thing by myself here. Uh, yeah, I know. I've had at least 25 people text me and say, uh, can you please get Aaron off the live <laughs> <laughs> Guys, he's laughing. I'm being serious. No. mentioning in the chat room about teams from different different states. Mike doesn't know this, but since I've taken over here, we have a new guest, a new guest in the room, Cameron Crow. Oh, and I can't hear him. He's not hooked up. You're not hooked up, Cam. Can you? Then maybe you're on. I don't know. Can you hear me? Hello? Mike stepped out and he left me here and we thought we were going to have a surprise guest that he, even Mike didn't know about. That's the old days team. Yes. Oh, hello, hello, yes. hello. Cameron Crow is in the booth with me. Welcome. Cam and I have never been in the booth together before. No, we haven't. Oh, yeah. this is really loud. I can hear myself talk. Okay, I don't really so like Okay, so Cam, this. as long as you're in the booth here. I'm sit down. What? My you finished at what? Plus 92 this morning? Plus 94. 94? 95, something like okay. that. Okay. So explain to the people watching here how you got to that total and, and what your strategy was today to get um, to plus 92 which is fairly high in the standings right now i know you're not happy because not you all. know you're trailing some people by a considerable amount right now even though there's six more games tomorrow but but your overall score was a pretty good performance today overall um explain to people how you got there what did you do throughout the day when um, you rolled today well game one was a was a little struggle yeah. um Try to try to play the gutter, you know. You know what I always try to do. Well, but again, we were on game, the lanes one and two, and one was oh, super, you can't hear me? super tight. Can you hear me now? Cherry. Are they not hearing you, Cam? Uh, maybe. Somebody give us a shout out. Somebody, somebody give us a shout out. <laughs> no, in the that's chat not my thing you can hear Cam. I'm so bad at I it. I am not a technical person, so I don't know if he's hooked up right or not. I can hear myself talk, so I you, yeah, they gotta I can, be able to and hear And I me. can hear you now. I it's, think they can hear you out there, okay, Cam. They okay. may not want to, but they can. Anyways, you've been in the booth for the last hour, so if <laughs> they, they want to hear you, don't hear they me. can hear me. <laughs> um, but game one was was a struggle. Um, mm -hmm. Tried to play the gutter a little bit. It was a lot of over under. Yep. Um, got to be perfect every shot, and unfortunately, I wasn't perfect. Um, so uh, struggle. Tried to get out of there. Tried to save a game, but uh, opened in the tenth for 160. Um, changed my entire mentality after that. Didn't throw the purple the rest of the day. Uh, actually through the um, Brunswick Quantum Evo response the rest of the day. Um, so for those who thought I only threw urethane, I did not. Guys, I did not. Um, but I saw every other lefty uh, bowl today. And they were getting urethane to peel a little bit. But uh, I just I didn't really see that uh, on the lane when it came to my ball reaction. So I tried to just grind as much as humanly possible. And you um, did. 
And I thought I did a pretty good job at it. I 220s on the death the rest of the day. Games two through five or two through six all were either 220 to 229. So I thought that was a pretty good like and line the last for myself. Game you had 220 going up, split in the tenth, split and in the tenth to 12. But still, you were right there, and yeah. that's kind of what Mike Flanagan and I were talking about earlier. Is this pattern? There were different ways to get to it, like you just mentioned. Uh, two of the lefties. You know that are way up at the top, Anthony Dodge and Alex Denton. They used primarily urethane the whole day. So when I was at the practice session last night, I knew urethane was in play on the left, but I also knew there were other ways as well. Oh yeah. And when you get to some of these medium patterns, that's both a plus and a minus. It's a plus because you know different styles and different you know ways of bowling can all get to the pocket, but the the other side of that coin is which is what keeps scores low because since you've got people playing all over the place each pair is its own jigsaw puzzle so when you go to a new pair you may not get lined up until frame four or five oh, yeah. and then you may have to throw the back four or five or six to save a two teen or a 220 and that's that's tournament bowling yeah yeah, um, those, we just got matters. the updated standings after four games. Oh, my goodness. And I just said Ryan Powers, who just shot 279. He, he went from six to first. He's plus 145. Trent Holes, another Trent left-hander. Holes, another lefty. You know he's how bowling. he's playing him? He's bowling. I saw him. Yeah, he's in. He's in? He's in hooking it. All yeah, right. A little bit. Not way in, but he's he's giving it away. He's throwing reactive or he's throwing your thing? Uh, reactive. He's throwing reactive. And he's plus 142. That's great bowling. Uh, Brendan Ceramic bowling very well today. He just last halfway through last game, he made that big move in. Had a nice what four or five bagger in there. He, to save he a did. Game? He did. Yeah, that was really save impressive. 180 after a rough start. And, and he plus 98. He's known for that though. He's really good at throwing the last five or six to really save blocks for him. Um, well, and, really and, impressed by that. And he's gotten a lot better over the years at at playing straighter. But we know still to this day, his bread and butter is getting in and shaping it. Yeah, and, one of the best at that. Yeah, and we discussed that before he started today that I thought he could get. You know, three, maybe four games out of the outside and then make that big big jump left, and, and he did. And I, I think he'll bowl well these last three. I think so um, as well. Moving in, Luke Fisher and F Dave Detlinger in fourth. Luke Fisher is fifth at plus 80. Brian Tippett having a good day so far, plus 79 from Cedar Rapids. Um, Zachary Greer, 76. Lucas Shout out Perdue, Zachary Greer. 71. Yep. Um, Nick DeCesario at, at 71. And rounding out the top 10, Logan Mason having a, a nice day today at plus 69. Okay. And right now, Who after got? four games, there are 26 players plus. Yes. So um, that's a little bit more than on A squad. The theoretical cut from this squad right now would be 23 or 24 over. So that number didn't move at all from last game. It didn't. Okay. After three, it stayed the same. So and that's kind of what happened this morning, too. Absolutely. And then they settled a little bit. Who uh, who do you think is going to make a big run these last three games? Oh, that's a great question. Um, uh, I got my eye on a couple people. Let me um, just kind of look at this here. Um, so, natural, I, 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 I wouldn't count. I wouldldn't count Jerry Mars out of this by I any means. I never it's count plus, Jerry Mars out no, of the tournament. Plus nine, I think he once he gets inside and shapes it, I, I think he could he, he can make, make a, a big run today. Um, I'm looking at Zach Rhodes in 16th. I saw his last couple frames down in lanes three and four. Uh, and, seems and like his ball reaction is pretty good. Yeah, and, and he's another bowler that earlier today I kind of said he's soft with it. His speed's a little slower, and he can kind of peel it from some places that guys are a little firmer that it'll go through the pattern. Absolutely. Whereas he can get it to shape off that. Absolutely. Uh, I'm looking at Garrett Meadows. Garrett, you know, Garrett's a tough Very one. good, very good player. Uh, very he's good up there right now, but. Yeah. Uh, I think he could really make a run, maybe even sneak into the top five. Yeah, he's at plus 43. He's sitting in a good position with oh, yeah. three games left. Absolutely. I mean, three 220s gets you to 100 over. Absolutely. I mean, sounds easy, doesn't it? I know it's not, but theoretically, you know, 60 over gets you there. Oh, yeah. I'm a hater. I don't want him to do that. I want him to stay behind me, but whatever. <laughs> um, who else are we looking at? Um, I'm going to always my teammate, William Young, hopefully. Oh, Flanagan's gets back. Yeah. Will Young oh, is Flanagan's plus. not back a lot. Will's plus 23. He's right there. He's okay. right on the number. Right on the right number. Now. He's yeah. had a big 230 game last game. Absolutely. Yes. That was really and look good at save. how tight that is in there. And that's that's tournament bowling. You've got 25, 24, 23, 22, 20. You've Absolutely. got a lot of bowlers that are right there. So Absolutely. Plus, oh, Mike we, is back. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. The host there is joining go. us. We just took over the entire that's, that's great. inside bowling that, booth. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> Mike, you know, out, out of the five years I've bowled this, I've never been a guest on here. This is actually my first time in the booth. 
Well, you should come in whenever you want. Oh, oh! I didn't. I thought I needed an invitation. I no, apologize. No, I, this has always been an open booth. Okay. Why do you think I'm here? Do you the think old, anybody would old, invite? Me? Absolutely never in life. <laughs> the only rule I have is if someone's had more than one alcoholic beverage, oh, yeah. oh, they're not zero. allowed to be. No, I'm not talking about you. Uh, yeah. I'm just telling you the only rule that I said it's an open booth. So Didn't anybody that's listening. Because I do get some folks that drink at night sometimes. Did oh, yeah. you have an issue with and that several years in. ago and kind of adopt that unofficial policy or not um, really? Well, we know how un- how out of control it can sometimes get late at night on C-Squad on Saturday night. I had something <laughs> happen at North Oaks Bowl, which has been closed for over 10 years. Okay. I wasn't even on YouTube at the time. I was on live stream was the name of the platform. Oh. And I did have a bowler late at night, mm. thought he was better than everybody, and just started ripping on all the people on the feed. Oh, oh that's and, a no-no. And that was yep. kind of when I made that rule. Mm-hmm. And I also had another bowler around the same time who is now a multiple PBA champion on tour that I don't even remember him making an ass out of himself on the air. <laughs> really? But he mentions it to me one to two times a year. And I still feel like so horrible. And this was back when it was on live stream, so it's not even there. Nobody can find it. Oh, so you you're not gonna you're not gonna tell me who the person is. No, I'm not. Okay. Mm-hmm. I might tell you off air or something. Okay. But, but this but this For this five dollars. This bowler yeah, right? still this bowler <laughs> still like apologize and just feels awful about it. like if it's one of his top five moments in his life he'd like to have back. Mm-hmm. Really? And we I don't all? and I don't even remember him being out of control at all. Like wow. I don't I don't even remember what he's talking about. And I was in the booth, so. But he was just like ripping off on people, or, or I don't, what? I don't think so. I, th- it was, he, I think he just didn't like what he had, how he sounded, and the things that he was talking mm-hmm. about that day. Oh. And you know what? We all have moments like that oh, yeah. where I, we'd like to go back and change a few. I things. actually, yeah. I, I believe that that moment on the air that he had helped him become a better person. Mm-hmm. You learn from your mistakes. You do. Yeah. And we're going to keep making them. That's what we do as humans. We make mistakes. And this person is a tremendous human being, too, by the way. So, like, mm. the fe- it probably wasn't even what he said. It wasn't even that bad. He but probably he, just but thought he it thinks was it is because mm-hmm. he has such high standards. Uh-huh. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Multiple PBA champion, by the mm. way. So, okay. Yep. Good dude. Good dude. Were you in the Midwest? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was at the Holiday okay. Doubles at Redbird oh. Lanes. Redbird? They had it at Redbird? Wow. Dude, young. it was at Village Bowl for, like, 25 years. How long has that tournament been going? And it became going, Redbird. Like, how long has Holiday I think, Doubles I been I think going? they're saying it's over 40. Wow. Wow. We were talking about it earlier, how that has just become a who's just who? a major who's who of bowling. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it is incredible, the top players that come out with that. Yeah. But now, Mike, you you actually run a couple of them now. Springfield. Well, I don't Nightmare, run. Not run them, I don't. But you I just stream them. them. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I have three in a row actually. This okay. is my first year. I'm gonna bowl night, uh, Nightmare actually. Really? Who yeah. are you bowling with? Uh, I'm bowling with Jalen Mosley. Shout out Jalen Mosley. I like Jalen a lot. Yeah, I like Jalen's game. Jalen this summer he can play. Crushed everything he looked at. So okay. I'm you, looking forward to it. When yeah. I think of Jalen, I think of when he bowled the Masters and made a really deep run at like 13 years old. Oh my or goodness! He cashed. Yeah. He, uh, he cashed at 15. I think he finished 13th place at age. Maybe 15. that's what it was. Yeah. Yes, insane. way up in the standings. Yeah, that is insane. Cam wasn't in the booth, uh, Mike, when you told me earlier today that you were going to be live streaming the 11th frame next year. Well, that yeah, are you? Yeah, that, I mean, I should be. I should. Yeah. Be. Okay. Awesome. Because yeah. isn't that your format? It is. Yes. Yeah. So I was always wondering why you didn't live stream it. He came up with the Flanagan points format. Well, I, that's my favorite tournament of the year. So <laughs> so I streamed it the first year or two. Then I took a job with Storm, okay. and I had to reduce the amount of live streams that I did. Mm-hmm. Oh. Um, so then from there, um, when I left Storm and went to work for Ebonite, Jeff was sponsored by Storm. And Storm really didn't want to be affiliated with things I was involved with because they really didn't like that I left the company and went to work for a competitor. And that's water under the bridge now. And okay. I understood where they were coming from. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, so I really wasn't allowed to stream. They, did, they didn't really enjoy me streaming Storm events. There was some, mm. you know, I don't know. It was, it was just a messy situation, which yeah, was yeah. unfortunate. Yeah. But they let me stream the Billy Gassens event last month. And... Uh, they under, they've seen over the years that on Bull TV I've given Storm every bit of credit. And, you know, I have oh, no yeah. issues with any ball company. I just want to state that. 
And uh, I respect the hell out of what Storm does and, and will always do and has done for the industry. Yeah. So uh, Jeff told me that he's no longer on Storm staff, so now that opens that back up. But okay. I honestly think Storm wouldn't have a problem with me streaming it now. Yeah. I think all that's cool now. Yeah. yeah. Um, I feel like the 11 frame is something everybody should experience at least one time and try to get to match play because those 12 games, anything can happen. That's the only tournament of the year where you can say you just got to get in. If you get in, you got a chance. You got a chance. Uh, Dakota can, started in what th this, this year? year? This year's champion, Dakota Salonka qualified. I believe he was 40th place or 38th place and worked his way up, qualified fifth, and ran the stepladder. So, yeah. Crazy. We were talking about that earlier, Mike, about how that tournament is very unique because of the number of games on Saturday compared to Sunday and the point format with the bonus pins. And, you know, it's one-of-a-kind event. I, I love the format. Obviously, it's my format. But I but I, I love it because this is, how I, this is how I came up with it. I would always run summer leagues, okay. summer bowling leagues, right, that were scratch leagues. And it's a short sprint. It's 14 weeks, mm -hmm. right? Oh, yeah. And, and I would get a ton of bowlers. Well, how in the hell are you going to be able to bowl against everybody and have an equal schedule? You told me this story. In, in 14 yeah. weeks. It's impossible. Yeah, yeah. you can't. Right? So in this league format we came up with, this is a little, this is a little crazy crazy, but uh, we came up with two different formats. One format was you bowled four games, and... Every week was position round. Oh, so it was like a Swiss. So the four, the top four singles okay. bowlers would be on the pair of lanes, and whoever had the highest game on the pair got four points. Second high got three points. Oh wow! Third high got two points. Lowest man got one point. Oh wow! The two highest bowled scores, those two move two pairs to the right. The two lowest scores on the pair move one pair to the left. Oh, you're talking after oh. each game. After each game. Okay. Okay. So you didn't know what pairs you were going to go bowl on based off of how you, how you did compared. Mm -hmm. But that's not even based off of average. So now you just got to beat the people that are on your pair. But I it's based like off that. of the standings. Yeah. And, all, and if you ever looked at the standings, the highest averages in the Scratch League were always at the top of the standings. That's almost almost every Absolutely. time, right? Yeah, but we no messed up the that. first year, and we put the leaders on like 9 and 10, and then the, the bottom feeders were on like 7 and 8. Right. So if you lost, it was like you were getting free points. Because oh, you yeah. went and bowled. So we had to stagger it the next year. Oh, yeah. So you would have the leaders on 9 and 10, the next one's on 11 and 12, the next one's on 7 mm -hmm. and 8, and so Back on, and, and you had to stagger yeah. it. So that was one format that we did where we thought, hey, this keeps it competitive all year. Then you would have people pre-bowl. Oh, so then, weird. So then they would have like a, a dummy card that is them, okay. and you would have to physically move the dummy card to each pair. Oh, so, when, so if they pre bowled on Wednesday and say your league is on Friday, so whatever they bowl, you got to beat. So you have the score to beat you, already. You knew scores ahead of time. I like that. I like that. And you could pre bowl up to two times in a summer. Oh, so you gave it a, like a, a restriction. On yeah, how many oh, yeah. Times. Yeah. Because people would just pre bowl and be like, okay, and I you, can set the score. And you could not pre bowl alone. You had to cross with someone. Oh, so you needed somebody you else to You had to schedule a time. Wow. It was very complex. It sounds complex. But we had 40 lanes, and we had uh, two bowlers on each lane, so we had 80 bowlers. It was full. Oh, and wow. the other crazy thing about that league is you could only use two bowling balls, and we gave them to you before the league started. It was Man, a, you had a lot of craziness Yeah, this sounds there, like a lot you? of crazy things It was things called the two-ball challenge. It was a whip. You had a whip and a pearlized whip. That was that's how <laughs> oh far back goodness. we're going. AMF. It was an AMF <laughs> oh, center oh I goodness. worked in. We came up with this and we filled it. And it was yeah, at nine thirty like at it. night. Oh my goodness. Second what, shift in what the summer. Day of the week oh. was that? Wednesday or Thursday Wednesday or Thursday nights, I can't remember. That's insane. And I'd be if I was in that league and it was on Thursday, I'd be calling in sick a lot of Fridays. <laughs> but it was it went quick. It was on a house shot. I mean, yeah, se several guys averaged quick. 240 for the summer. Oh, so and in St. Louis, yeah, yeah you guys can strike a lot. Yeah, so a three-game league, Mike? Three <laughs> four, game, four. Four games. games. Four games. It was quick, though. That sounds like – it actually sounds like a lot of fun. And it was like – back, like back then it was like – it was like – Four four dollars lineage for three games and at nine thirty at night. You know, in the summer leagues, you wow. can do a lot of crazy things. You can experiment right. because yeah. it's a shortened season, and, and if people like it, they can't wait to do it again the next summer. And if people don't like it, you just simply never do it again. Right. So, so that was one yeah. league format, and then uh, then I then I did a, a two ball challenge league, and and people thought, man, this is too hard with the moving of the pairs and in, like you know. It was a, it was it was difficult for these There's people to grasp, to it. Yeah. right? Yeah. It was a, not as high of end bowlers. Mm -hmm. So then that year, I decided, okay, well, they're not going to get this. So here's what we'll do: 
we'll just have every bowl, everybody bowl with different people every week. Okay. But they'll bowl everybody in the league. So we ended up with 64 players in this particular wow. center. Wow. So whoever had the high game got, got 64, 64 points. points. Mm -hmm. And the low game got one one point. And that's how you came up with the 11th frame. And yep. that's, how, that's how we came up with that league. And people really, really liked it because they didn't feel like they were bowling somebody head-to-head. -head. And if they bowled like 250 and somebody bowled 260, they didn't, they didn't they get didn't lose. They, they got the second most points. They, they got yeah. they got several points. Yeah. However, it worked out, right? So which was nice, and you bowled yeah. everybody. Yeah. So there is no more of this in a short sprint format that you could be averaging ten pins higher than somebody else in this league, yet be below them. It really benefited yeah. consistency yes. and avoiding really bad games. And Agree. That's, and that's why you and I have talked in the past, Mike, about the format of Team USA trials being the ideal Hello, format. Cher, from yeah. Mike. Sorry. I just got a note from Mike Peck saying hello to Cher. So, Cher, if you're out there, hello, hello. Now, Cam, if you could, on that computer screen there. Right here? Yep. See yeah. that layer down below with all the bowling stuff going on? Right here? Yeah, so go over to the right. We need to find the one that's just like that one, but uh -huh. it's got you guys in the corner. So click on it. Oh, uh, right here. That's all right. Should be right here. Nope, it's the one to the right of it probably, or the left of the left it. Left of it? There it is right there. Right there. So then you hit that arrow. You see that, that big yellow thing that's lit up? Two, Where? Two to the right of the yellow there. Two to the right of the... Uh, in the middle of the arrow? screen. It's like an arrow that sends it over. Am I? Down, down, down. right, 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 up. Left. Up, left, I arrow. Have, right yeah. here? Yep. Boom. You click that, now you guys are on the screen. I Boom. Have, I have met another person that is technically not with it like me. Cam struggled. <laughs> that was that. crazy. Because I wouldn't I could not see that at Cam, all. I wouldn't have known where to find I was find like, where am either. I looking at? Yeah. <laughs> I want to... I look at I look at this setup, but every time I'm this in is here, insane. Mike, I talk to you about this, and I'm saying I don't. Jennifer came down when Cam first got in the booth, and she showed me to push this button up so we could hear Cam. Yeah, I don't even. Yeah, know basically. What these are. So, so this this is Cam, right? So that's Cam, mm -hmm. and if he's talking, that's 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 if he needs the coffee, he just takes it down. Okay. Goes up. This is you. So we shut you down right there. Yep. Move you back up. And this, that's you. This is me right now. You can't hear me. Now you can hear me, right? So you th technically have room for a bunch more people could well, hop on here at the yeah, same well, time. Yeah, well, this one here is for a wireless mic, which I have right here oh, in case oh, I want to use it. Oh, when you go do interviews yep. and stuff, yeah. And then this one here takes, like, I could put these in here, and then I could put, plug this into my phone, and I could call Jason Belmonte, and we could talk to him on the phone. Yep. Oh, wow. Um, you know, and then these are more of those. So okay. Okay. only those up there for the – that so Mike how long is there an about? update with score yes, yes. Uh, game four updates yeah, are we, in we went we went through uh, this we went let's through go through early. it again and also the link at the top of the chat room also shows that everybody can click on that link that I have to pinned at the top scores. to find scores also yep also before you say that uh share um if you were curious um Mike Peck actually has a seven bagger right now so I think you're um, motivating him just yeah, a little he, bit. He is not on one of the live stream pairs. He's between them right now, but he started with an open, and now he's got seven in a row. Going he's on nine frame. and ten, and we'll let you know when he's up. You'll be able to see his ball go down lane ten when he's up. And he currently is minus 57, so this, so this game is, is going to game game benefit him. He could get right back in this thing after yep. this game. So just kind of going through the scores here. Ryan Powers leading at plus 145. Trent Holtz at plus 142. Brendan Ceramic third at 98. Dave Dentlinger fourth at 86. Luke Fisher in fifth at plus 80. Brian Tippett sixth place plus 79. Zachary Greer is in seventh at plus 76. We have a tie for eighth at plus 71 between Lucas Perdue and Nick DiCesario. DiCesaro. And 10th is Logan Mason at plus 69. And we have 26 players right now on B squad that are even or better. That's a lot more than my squad. Yeah. I a mean, lot more. It, it's, but this is kind of where it started to settle this morning. So we shall see. Do they continue to, to keep scoring in I the mean, number of players? Looking at more? scores, I see a lot of three baggers and four baggers. But I see a lot of red circles up there. I also do see a lot of those. So, it's just depending on who you are, depending yeah. on where you are in the standings, that matters. You're gonna, every tournament, you're going to see some zigzagging between players going Absolutely. up and players going down. That's what a tournament is. Andy Stone oh, gets the Oh, he caved the in the 2-8. 
trying to save this game oh, from yeah. a rough start. Oh, you he's not on the live stream pair. You guys can go see that on lane nine. Yeah. Mike Peck throws an eight bagger. Yeah, he's now he's eight in a row. Luke Fisher going here. into the ten. Luke he's Fisher's fired up. Oh, give me some. Luke oh, Luke Fisher just caved him in in the tenth frame. Luke's in fifth place at plus eighty, and he's trying to save this game with eighty four in the fifth. He's trying to turn this into a nice game here. Mike Peck is, what is Mike Peck? Mike Peck currently is, is minus, minus 57. 57. Minus 57. Yeah. We saw that this morning from a, a lot of players. You know, you get to that 40, 50 under, and all of a sudden you won big game, you're right back in the tournament. Yeah, that's a, that's a, and this is a big game for him. And yeah. speaking of big games, I've never actually seen, um, what is his name? Jake Gens bowl before until this very game right here. Really? And, man, let me tell you, can he throw that ball? Yep. I've never seen him bowl before. Jake bowled our greater Iowa's when he was 13, 14 years old. Look at old. that. Yep. Boom. Yep. He's going to have 250 he's, if he strikes he's, out this Jake's game. Jake's been in St. Louis for probably Yeah, I was just going to say. Years. That makes a lot of sense why he strikes probably a lot. 10 years, right, he, Mike? He, he and Andrew Orr for buddies. Okay. Um, he, uh, I believe he went to Lindenwood. If he didn't go to Lindenwood, he went to. Andrew went to McKendree, so he might have went there too. Uh, right. He went to somewhere around there. Okay. And uh, I don't think Jake Bold collegiate. No? I don't think so. Uh, his father, mm -hmm. Robbie Gens, sitting right next to you in the blue, Mike. Yeah. One of, one of the Quad Cities legends of the game. I, Robbie, I bowled. I was Robbie a, was a fantastic bowler in his day. He's had a lot of health problems this summer, but it's nice to see him up here supporting his son. Absolutely. Had the honor of bowling the league with Robbie a couple times. Mm -hmm. um, good, Really good dude, really good person, so I'm assuming his son is the same way. All I know is out of, out of nowhere, all of a sudden, John Brockman called me and said, yeah, our ORFs group to Nationals is changing a little bit, and that was like six years ago. He goes, we got this really good player that Andrew recruited, Jake Gins. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, okay. Second shot in the 10th. Bang. Looks good. Oh. oh. You don't see that hit very often. What type of seven pin hit that was, was that? Yes, that was ugly. It wasn't a ripper or a stone seven. It was just kind of a, a late seven. It was probably because he's wearing that Cubs jersey, to yes. be honest. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. I'm a Cardinal fan. Oh, thing. my goodness. I am goodness. a Cardinal fan, too, Mike. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm not Still a Cardinal a fan. Solid, solid 248 to Jake. That's, that's going to take him to plus one. That's going to take him to. Where is he here? 49. Yeah, that's going to take him to almost 100 over. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to be in the top 10 after this game, I'm assuming. Oh, yeah, way up there. Yeah. Yep, he'll make Big game for him. Probably pass five or six people with that game. Absolutely. All right, Mike Peck stepping up here in lane nine in the 10th frame on a nine bag, eight bagger right here. Yep. Uh, can really can get back to plus after this shot right here. So this is a big shot for Mr. Peck. Justin Stewart over there. He was plus 25 and just shot 193, and he – he threw a late turkey to get that. So, big shot, first That's shot of ten. That's good. That's good. Bang! Yes. That was good. I gotta work on my bang. So I'm gonna try the next shot. Hopefully, That's he strikes a nine again. Bagger. Was that a good bang? Like rated from one to ten. That was a solid eight, Cam. Oh, uh, that's, yeah. that's that's not good. I'm gonna try. Yeah. I'm gonna try it better next time. <laughs> We're gonna try to better it. That looked like it might have been might have been in a smidge from where he was aiming, but he got through it really strong and kind of just pushed it down the lane. And ten fell. Yeah, it was flush. The end result was good. What did he leave in the first frame? A big four? I didn't I see didn't it. I didn't see it. Could have been, yeah, could have been anything. But obviously he learned from that, Mike, because he's got nine in a row now right bagger. behind it. And he's throwing for the save. <gasps> Seven, ten. Oh, through the face. Oh. Couldn't break that up. All right, come on. Let me see if I can work on my bang here. Come on. That's got to push. Ah, uh, did not push. Yeah, that. That was, that was in from the but go. But doesn't matter. He's plus now. Oh, yeah. So That's how you go from minus 57 to plus 9. Plus 9 with two more games to go. Yep. He's wearing some of my favorite shorts, the Adidas <laughs> light grays with the three stripes. The those are like the golfer shorts, yep. right? Yep. Yeah. Those shorts, would I could wear those as pants. They're going to run you about six, <laughs> 60 bucks on these things. Yep. So, Mike, I asked Eric about the, uh, the cut line. What do you think the cut line is going to be? Ten. Really? Because I said, I said what, 30-ish? I was saying about 30. Because do you think C-Squad is the strongest squad? Are we in agreement to that? No. No. Really? Okay, okay, well. It's a good squad. I don't this is the best C-Squad I've seen in a while. It is. Especially at this it, tournament. I don't think it's the best squad here, but I, it's a good squad. Okay, here's, yeah. here's what I think about C-Squad, all right? No matter what happens in this event, C-Squad always, always plays lower, regardless of skill level. 
Yeah. I'm just talking about the pattern alone. Just How plays many tighter. times it's been yeah. laid out. Okay. And so that's truer. that's number one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number two, I think I think it's a stars and scrubs. Squad. You got a lot of scars, but you also got a lot of people who, you know. It's not a very balanced bed. squad, in my opinion. Okay. 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 I'm really emceeing the top names, so like uh, that's why you're you're dazzled by mm -hmm. Nick Pate and He's dazzled. Dazzled. Yeah. Dazzled by Nick Pate. Yeah, dazzled by Nick Pate. <laughs> Mike, there's been a lot of people dazzled by Nick Pate over yeah, the years. I know. <laughs> yeah, no, because, I mean, usually me and Stu would bowl together, and he had to work late, so he's bowling C-Squad, so that's another person. I just realized this. Weren't you going back? Yeah, I'm going back. <laughs> it's not dark yet. I got time. I got a lot of time. Tony Oliva over there at a, at a nice game, 259. Oh, that's a big game. And that was with a 2810 on his fill ball. Where was Tony at? Tony was minus, minus 9, seven. minus 7. Cam, I need you to take the viewers over to this pair now over here, which should be the, right the one to the right. Yep. Boom. And then you click that little arrow Boom. over. There we go. Oh, I like the transition. I kind of like that. Yeah. That's you, smooth. Yeah, that, I know. That's, I knew we brought Cam in here for a reason to keep us technologically advanced here. It. I'm enjoying standing a little bit over here. Yeah, you said you were stretching your legs, Mike. You I, got to. You've I been did. sitting a long time. Yeah. What's up? I said, that's not good. Jake went to <laughs> Hannibal LaGrange. It was, a, it was an NAIA school. Okay. Okay. Did. There you go. You got, but he didn't bowl. We got our answer. He played, he played softball or baseball. Oh, he was a very good baseball player in that's his what day. It was, I know yeah. that. Yeah, that's what I it was. I know that. Oh my goodness! Oh, see, see now you got now he's turning the soundboard up and down. He's, oh, he's taking over. He's doing Mike. great. I'm a professional now. I think Mike great. should have me in the booth all the B squad oh, for Nightmare. <laughs> what do you think, Mike? That's perfectly fine by me. I that, love it. I, I, that's I would love that. We're just finishing up game five here. We got a couple frames left here. It looks like on kind of one pair straggling a little bit behind here. I don't know if they had some mechanical problems, but that's the last pair. It looks like bowling. This is bowling game five. They've they've been behind the whole day. Uh, right. I don't know why. A little bit behind. Um, just a little bit behind. They're striking. I mean, it's not like they're not striking. I think they just like to – they're more methodical to their approach, you think? See, what I think should happen when a pair gets behind, I think every single pair should have like a, like a chain link cage with barbed wire at the top. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> and it comes down out of the ceiling, and they're not allowed to leave that the bowler's area and it's until they're oh, caught yeah. up. And then the cage lifts up, and they can go back and – and, you know, do other things throughout the bowling center. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness is right. Don't you think that's a good idea? That's a crazy, crazy idea because that could really hurt somebody. I also think in college bowling. <laughs> oh, here we go again. I remember. I know where oh you're no. going with this, Mike. I think in college bowling, all the teams should have to start at the exact same time. Okay. <laughs> and every team has 55 minutes to complete their game. I agree with that. And there's a clock. And after that, and you when get the zeros. horn goes off, that's it. That that's game, it. That game's that's it. over. If you I don't, agree with if that. you don't get your game in, you you get zeros for the rest. And, and they hit, they hit the horn, and you got three minutes to go to your next pair. The horn sounds again, and boom, game number two. Of you, I don't know if I agree with the three minutes, but oh, I you want you, five minutes. You yeah, because say we're at the North traffic, Rock. The get, traffic. Yeah, it's gonna be crazy. All right, five minutes. Five minutes. Give me but at least I, but five. But I'm not gonna give you a skip procedure where you got to move or super far either. Oh, okay. Well, so maybe we can do that. But the, somebody's gonna have to make the jump. So you so got to give them at least the five fi minutes. The 55 minutes might not be a bad thing because guess what? Nobody finishes in 55 minutes now. But if you had to, it would you be would. An entirely different story. I promise story. you would. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That'd be crazy. Wouldn't that? I mean, isn't that I would ideal? Love it. I bowl fast anyway, so I would absolutely adore it. It's yep. totally I'd be a big ideal. Fan. Yes. Coaches would have to start teaching pre short pre-shot routines. Agreed. Well, all right, we need to cut out five half of your pre-shot <laughs> routine. What do you got to have? Well, I got to wipe the ball off, coach. That's well, you it. can wipe the ball off before Between you're up. Between shots. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay, let's get that out of there. Yep. That's true. Tell me that wouldn't be way better. That would be. Major League Baseball this year, viewership is up. Oh, yeah. Attendance is yeah. up. Oh, yeah. Overall popularity is up. Yep. And the games are like 35 minutes shorter. Yep. Because of the pitch clock, right? Well, yeah. yeah. I, I love that. I I'm a big fan of the pitch clock. I can clock. tell you one thing that slows down college bowling, and I'm as guilty of it as anybody, and that's that's the 10th frame, your fill shots. You know, I can guarantee if that went to 55-minute games, 
that two and three minute conversation with each bowler as they come in to throw a fill shot, those would go away in a yeah, hurry. Agree. Exactly. <laughs> agree. But right or now, even with somebody that's in the line. But right now you're at a disadvantage if you don't do that because the other coaches are doing it, so everybody's yeah. forced to do it. But if you yeah. get rid of it and say you can't do it anymore, then you wouldn't. Then you wouldn't, wouldn't and you, then everybody's on the same playing zero. field yeah. again. Yeah. Right? I'm a big fan yeah. of this. Mike, you should run yeah. college bowling, right. I think, to be honest. I'm telling I'm a you, fan I, of this. I, I really think this is. That's an idea that I we need to implement to college bowling. Please. Eric, you're. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> That's it. There we go. Are they saying you're soft? We yeah. All, we uh, if they are, you just got to move the mic up a little bit, Eric. Just oh, sorry. A little sorry. Closer. Yeah, there you Mike, go. we always solve the world's problems in this booth when you and I are I sitting know, here. I know. Eric's not solving anything, <laughs> especially not work. Never mind. Don't you think <laughs> it's, don't you, <laughs> you were going to say eating pizza? I was going to say we're all hungry because yeah. you ate it all, but yeah. it's okay. <laughs> I can't solve that. Yeah. I think the first time they need to, to have the cage is at the Open Championships. The cage. Yes. Actually, the three years that I bowl, everybody who bowls in our squad bowls pretty fast. I feel well, like we bowl pretty good. quick. But yeah. how awesome would that be if all of a sudden you're bowling Open Championships and you see a team falling way behind and this cage comes down? I would laugh every over, time over their area. Especially, as, imagine what the people that, that like that have been drinking. Oh my goodness, Mike, they wouldn't know how to act. Mike, they would like be panicking. You're, I know. Young, you're younger than me, but years ago, there was only two team squads. There was the seven o'clock or the seven thirty squad, or the seven o'clock squad and the ten o'clock squad. All of the good teams bowled the ten o'clock squad because the USBC back then ABC. They knew the good bowlers took longer to bowl, and they didn't care when they finished because once the 10.30 or the 10 o'clock squad started, yeah. nothing happened until After 7 right, the next right, right. morning oh, yeah. anyway. Yeah. So all of the good – whereas now they're sprinkled throughout the event. Yep. So you do you are on a much tighter schedule than you were 20, 25 years ago. Yep. So the cage would come into effect. Yep. <laughs> so I'm going to – I'm going to some way, somehow – Get in charge of some collegiate event. Just USBC. I don't know how I'm going to do it. Please do it. <laughs> I'm going to get in Eric, charge of some make collegiate sure event. Whatever he's running, make sure we're there. Make and, sure we're there. And, um, and, and I'm going to implement the air horn. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm going to use an actual air horn. Just like on a golf course when it starts lightning or whatever, they got to yep. pull all the golfers off the course. They walk outside yep. with an air horn. Yep. That's what we're going to do. Play has what if somebody's suspended. mid shot, like mid approach? I would say if the bowler stepped onto the approach for their shot, they can complete the shot. Okay. Okay. Well, at least that's some sort of rule. But, like, what if they're bowling, like, like mid-shot? They should have already been done. That's crazy. They should I think, have completed their yeah, play. I agree. At least yeah, a couple minutes Yeah, 55 minutes is up. Yeah. Yeah, 55 minutes. I, to be honest, it wouldn't affect, like, the great teams. Like, Wichita bowls the fastest I've ever seen any team bowl in their life. Weber bowls incredibly fast. I well, think that, it's just really the slow that, team uh, well, who can't strike. Sometimes that that goes along with the old saying, think long, think wrong. Yeah, you know? yeah, agreed. And I'm not saying anything against, you know, slow teams or fast teams or whatever, but sometimes, you know, we've all been there. You're up on the approach and you're uh -oh. you're a little lost. You're, the you're scores undecided. Are, the scores are messed up. Oh, so this is what happened. Somebody just bumped the table. Uh oh. So I'm seeing to, a commercial. commercial. So I'm going to show you how I do it. Mike's going to come in here and get things done. Here comes a specialist. Yep. you got to remember, he makes, he makes his living at this. Cam and I are just in here because nobody else wanted to talk to us. But nobody wanted to talk to you. <laughs> People want to talk to me. Cam, you can't even humor me there for a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> This is our relationship, guys. <laughs> this is what we do. We just I, bully each other for the last up, five years. Is that better? Each other for five years. Uh, Six, yeah. right? A little bit. This yes. is what we're putting out right here. Oh, okay. Yes. No, it looks better. There yep. we go. Perfect. Yep. Are they done with game uh, four yet? Five it, yet? This is just finishing game five. It's that one pair right there. Everybody else. Okay. We've got some teams here that are frame in frame four. four of game five or oh, game six my goodness. already. They're okay, about to go to candlelight? Some, some lights just yeah. out in the center. I was just going to say, what just – Now they just now, pop back on. Yeah, that was a strange thing. Oh, I thought we were about to have some candlelight bowling. Mm. I was going to put my shoes back on. I thought on. somebody was going to put an air horn out there and say you these know, people are down oh, you on 11 people, and 12. You thought they listened to you, Mike? Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know, Mike, a year ago, 
last October when we had our Greater Iowa Scholarship Tournament over at Cadillac across town, a storm was blowing through and it blew the power out, and we actually had to cancel the tournament. Oh. After four four games of match play, we had to end the tournament. Oh, wow. First time in my my 25 years of running them that we've ever had a, a tournament. That's crazy. And before the last ball was thrown. Wow. We had to pay. We paid out on official standings after 12 games instead of 16. Wow! All right, Cam. Because yeah. these people are behind, what I want you to do is you, on the second layer down. You got an air horn on here? You, no. You see uh -oh. the second air? <laughs> see the second layer? You're in the second layer Bingo. right there. Yeah. Click on the next game, which is that graphic right there. This one right here? No. The plus or right here? Right there. That's it. Boom. So that that should say game what six? Boom. Right. Boom. Okay, and then go down and bring in our left two pairs. Right here? Uh, the, 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 the screen is just to the left of the one you have selected. Boom. And then hit the button. Boom. Okay, now we're officially in game six. Game six. All across the board here. On, yep, on lanes yep. five through eight. So All we got right. new players over Everybody's there. Everybody's in game six. So we're watching them right now. Mm -hmm. So the screen on the left cam is the preview screen where you build whatever you want. Okay. And then the screen on the right is what the audience actually sees. Okay. So you can mess around in that left screen, Will build what you want, and send it with that arrow. One of our teammates here, Will Honestly. Young. Shoot, shout out Will Young. Shooting the eight pin. He got off to a nice start with a double here. You know what he shot at game five? I did not see what he had game five. I think, oh, you know what? He came from all the way down the other end. And Darren Bloomquist is also on that pair. Will Young shot 191 game five, which and gets him, him to 14, 14 over. 14. So he's right in the game. He's got two big ones. Yeah. All it takes is two big ones. And you know I'm rooting for my teammates. Two little ones might be enough. Two little ones might be enough. Yeah. Mike, I don't think you're right about this 10 over. I'm not going to lie to you. 10 over seems like that's kind of crazy. Mike, I'm <laughs> in the same boat with you. You and I talked about it. 10 over. That 7 over was in the game before this squad started, so, and I still think it's in the game. Okay, so off of the first squad, 7 over was 19th? 18th. 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 What was 17th? 17th 11 was over, I believe. 11, and then it was so Zach Don't we have it somewhere here? I know Zach was in – was he in 16th? Yeah, that list 11? there should be oh. in – Pretty much chronological. So yep. if we go back, we should be able to go back to game six. Game there we go. Seven, there it is. Oh, seven, I mean. So, yeah. yes. Plus seven and then plus 11 and then 15. However, that's a huge jump. 30 pin jump between 16th and 15th. It's a huge jump, Mike. So maybe the cut's somewhere in between there. Okay, so. I don't know. So, Ten let, over just so seems. let's say 11 and up make it off of the first squad, which is my guess. <laughs> Which mm -hmm. is se that's 17, right? Mm -hmm. So we got what 41, 40. How many spots we got? 39, 39 spots, spots left. Mm -hmm. So that'd be 19 and 20. Yeah. Okay. So what is what is 20th place pacing on this squad? That's after two games. Oh, Eric. Yeah, that was uh, after four games. We don't have the fifth game in here yet. 20th place is plus 22. Right now. Yes. Okay, so now let's pull out game four from the first squad. And what was... Uh, 20th place? Yeah, roughly. Or 17th, really. 17th was plus 10. So 17th was plus 10, and it went to 11 later oh. in the block? Yes. So right now it's at plus 20. It's going to get to plus, what, 22, 23? I mean... That's ten is a, theoretically, if you look at both squads, that's probably because um, it did settle and I, a little And bit. I think this is the strongest squad of of cashers. Yes, agree. I think there's going to be more cashers out of this squad than any other. Agree. And if that's the case, and it's plus twenty two, then that puts it right back at that ten after the end of C. And squad. you think C squad? You you got the studs up there, but you also have the people who you think are going to dink it off. So yep, and, okay. And I think the lanes are going to play, play slightly tougher. tougher okay, tonight. okay. So I'm saying that number eleven would be the cheater score. Yeah. Ele I should say eleven is going to be the cut because there's that eleven that's in there from this morning. Okay. But I am gonna I am gonna put myself out there and say ten. Ten. Wow. Now, Mike, I told you we need that seven to get there. I know. I don't. I don't <laughs> think it's going to get there. But uh, it wouldn't shock me if it did. Yeah. It, it would. If, would if it shock I, you if, if it got somebody, to twenty over? If somebody made me. Yes. If wow. If somebody made me make a bet whether plus seven is over, and made me put twenty dollars of my cold, hard-earned cash 
I would say seven over is not enough. But I wouldn't bet any more than twenty dollars. Let me see this after four. Is this this squad after four? Yes. Yep. Okay. All right, Cam. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna make a fictitious wager with you that doesn't really exist. Okay. All right. Twentieth place right now is plus twenty two. Okay. Do you think twentieth place at the end of this squad, this squad only, okay, will be over or under twenty two? Over. And I will say under. under. Over. Oh wow. Because that's what happened on the first squad. Wow. No, it went. Oh, we can look at game five right now. All actually, right. here we go. I want to know. I haven't 20th, looked yet. I want to know twentieth place. Oh, I'm scared to look. I'm scared 20th to look. I'm scared place. to look. Twentieth place. God. <sighs> What's the score? It is indeed plus 18. There you go. Yep. Plus 18. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the uh, number after six games, the number this morning, took a big jump to get to 15 over. And then it settled right back down yeah. to, plus, okay. to plus seven. Wow, that's tough. Okay. So yep. your leader is. You guys is, might be right. You guys have been doing this longer than I have. Your so. leader is Trenton Holes at plus 135 after five. Ryan Powers is second at plus 121. Lucas Perdue, uh, plus 119, is third. Luke Fisher is fourth at plus 116. Brendan Ceramic is fifth at plus 109. And Logan Mason at 101 is sixth. Jake Gins is seventh at 96. Dentlinger is eighth at 95. We got two players at 85. That's Garrett Meadows and Nick DeSaro. DeSaro, excuse me. Uh, that's ninth place. Uh, they're tied. 11th is Zachary Gear at plus 82. 12th is Galbraith at 77. And we have 25 players that are plus. Andy Stone plus four is 25th currently. So so the number of plus scores only dropped by one player that game. Right. Uh, you it's guys always, might be right about this plus but it's 10. it's always fun oh, comparing squads and comparing numbers. And it's, that's what I was saying to Mike earlier, talking about the ebbs and flows of the cut number and the cash number. Oh, carry that. Oh, baby. Getting me a Brooklyn hit, Willie Young. We're taking every single one of those. Okay, so tell, so so again, the first squad, 11 and up was 17th, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, so give me 17 off of A. Okay. That's 11 over. Yep. Then off of B. You're right? going to take 20? What's, what's 21st score? 14. Let's give him that. Well, yeah, yeah, 21 off of this one. Oh, uh, you panicking. You stuttered. That puts 38. And yep. now you've got room for 18 off C, which is pretty much kind of what you explained maybe. And yeah, and I think Les will make it off C. Uh, uh -huh. I think it'll be 16 off C. So, so that's seven me, over my give me, give, me 20, give me 23 on B. 23rd on B is uh, eight over. That me, seven over might not at, be enough. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Yep. Yeah, so I'm going to – and then 16 on C then. So you yep. would scratch 18 on there. So I would think that we're going to get 23 off B, 17 off A, and 16 off C. Well, it's actually a three-way tie for 23rd. It's actually 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. So are we going to take 15 off of B or 15 off of C now? No. No? No. no okay. Because those numbers are still alive and yeah, moving. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, this is going to be brutal. And you know what? I'm still going to stick with my 18 over. Okay. But, I'm sticking but, with my 18. But, you know, kind of the funny part of this is the gentleman we're talking about at plus seven is Spencer Worthman, uh -huh. who threw the back five of game seven to preserve plus seven with a 192 at the 11th frame last month. Throughout his entire qualifying games, he went literally 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-
he needs to start using rosin a little bit more because it seems like it slips he off his hand a lot. A bit. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Either that or he needs oh. to change a pitch. That too. That could be a thing. But it seems like the first couple frames it's, it's perfectly fine, and then it's just like, just randomly it's sometimes it's like maybe his hand gets wet or his he, hand he gets could, sweaty. He could have extreme swelling issues. He could. He could. Oh. Nick this. So maybe the first two frames of the game he needs a different it or whatever he uses, switch grip. He's a two-hander, so he doesn't have oh, an it or a switch yeah. grip. Well, then well, how's it falling off his hand then? Well, when you have – You can lose it as yeah, a Yeah, you can lose as a, as a two-hander, absolutely. And a one-hander, yeah. Well, then he needs to get like a tacky glove or something. Either that or just a ton of rosin. Something. Ah. Something. He needs to call Pete Weber and get a foot joy. Nah, Pete were going to yell at him. What do you mean he's slipping off your hands as a two-hander? As much money as <laughs> Pete Weber made in his career, you'd have thought foot joy would have sponsored him. Yeah. What lane is Mike Peck on now? Mike is on. Where's Mike at? 13 and 14. 13 and 14. Yeah, he skipped, skipped one pair. After um, yeah. We can take a peek at him if you want to move over there. Well, he's, is he is um, he D or is he B? He is, I believe he is D. So that well, means he has a, a max of 247. Yeah. Oh, boy. Mike, uh, that number. Mike, that number might go up. That ain't going up. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that number is going up. Mike, do you ever have people chime in the chat room and say, would you guys shut up about the number? No. <laughs> and that's good because they must be as enamored with it as we yeah, are. That's they, yeah, they love talking about the number. Yes. The theoretical number. What's going on in the chat room, Cam? I can't see it. Anybody, um, anything interesting going on? Apparently there was a missed five pin on lane six that I missed. Uh, uh, Marshalltown, Iowa has a ten gamer with manual scoring the last two games. Really? Manual scoring the last two games. I would never bowl that tournament. Why wouldn't have manual scoring all ten games? I don't know. It makes no sense. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Um, scoreboard's off. No. Other than that, everything's all good. Um, proud of you, Trenton. I'm proud of Trenton, too. As a yes. fellow left-hander, he's bowling incredible. He is bowling very well, leading the squad at plus 135 with two games to go. Jacob Kraft doing the ball good, absolutely. What is Jacob Kraft right now? He is plus eight after five. Plus eight after five. Hopefully we can make a run. Hopefully we can mm -hmm. see what happens there. I'm trying to get to that number. Everybody under plus 18, I want everybody to Cam, bowl out of their I, mind right yeah, now you and just I so I can prove Mike wrong. After four, we thought Jerry Mars could make a move. He went from plus nine. He shot a solid 233 to go to plus 42. Both you and I were All in right. agreement on oh, yeah. any charge but that he, he, he were to make. He's supposed yeah. to make the cut. He, he was. He's, he's supposed to make the cut. Yeah. So. That was one of the guys you had if penciled you, in there. Yeah, if you if you pick out bowlers who you think are going to be there, he'd be one of them. But we all know bowling doesn't work that way all the time. But no, you're going to be Barrett right. Hey, that, yes, he's right. – Absolutely. If, what, what odds could you have got I if know. you'd have said Tim Barrett was going to go 130 under? Right. Well, Tim Barrett's a phenomenal bowler, but he also knows that's bowling. Right, you know? yeah. If the good bowlers bowl good all the time and beat the other bowlers, we wouldn't have 156 bowl, or 168 bowlers here. Let me ask you a quick question here, Cam. Talk to me. If uh, if there was an event that was paying a hundred thousand dollars, I'd be there next weekend. <laughs> I'd be there next weekend. I'd be there. Hundred grand for first, okay. And the format was sixteen games, no reoil on the U.S. Open. Everybody bowls the same squad on Saturday. Okay. And then on Sunday, sixteen games on about a thirty mils, forty-two foot house pattern. Sixteen games, no reoil. And every PBA professional showed up. Every key amateur player showed up. Just pretend like it's a cross between Team USA trials and the Tournament of Champions. Okay. Okay? And everybody's there. Okay? Okay. Do you think you would have an advantage over, a, over the field? And when I say an advantage, it just means that you are in the 51% that can bowl good on both patterns. Okay. As a, or are you in the forty nine percent that would be like, oh God, I, 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 I don't know about the house, or I don't know about the U.S. Open pattern. You like, know, how do you think you would fare? So, um, it depends. A, it depends on what U.S. Open pattern you're talking about. Just um, give me forty foot flat. 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 One, Just forty one, feet flat. One to one. one, to one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the old U.S. Open pattern. I feel like I don't know because I would say if I had an advantage. 
I feel like I maybe I have an advantage over the top amateurs, I guess, if they're bowling the easy stuff. Because since I'm still in college, I still bowl in the hard. See, I'm asking if you, I think you'd, I think you might have an advantage over some of the top touring professionals that don't bowl on house shots ever. I, I say that too, but then every year I see EJ Tackett go 500 over at Holiday Doubles, so I don't really know if okay. the top professionals don't know how to bowl in the China. And if it's for $100,000, I think they will go and bowl in the China and practice on it for a little bit. Well, they know how to bowl on the China. It's just it's kind of like when you're not used to bowling on a certain. It's kind of like the short pattern. Well, people, good bowlers know how to play the short, but if yeah. you haven't played on it for a while, it takes a little while to get reacclimated. It's kind of like some oh, of yeah. the top players that don't bowl on the easier stuff very often. They can bowl on it. It just takes a little acclimation period. And if you were the number one seed, Cam, and you got to pick the the, the house the, shot, the, the, you put the house shot. The house shot. The house shot. I would make them try to throw twelve in a row, just like me. I'm not bowling Jason Belmonte on the day hard. I, I'd rather not. He's been in that situation before. I've never been on a live telecast with a step ladder. I I don't think. I'm not saying I wouldn't like my chances. I I like if I'm in, if I'm the number one seed, I like my chances against anybody. But if I had to pick, I would pick the house shot. One hundred percent. Which pattern, Actually, which pattern do you think you would qualify higher on? Uh, the 40-foot flat one, probably. Um, but it depends who's in the field. It really depends who's in the field. I really don't know. Because if, it, if it's all the touring professionals. Um, I, I think the righties have a little bit of an advantage on the 40-foot flat. And I think the lefties have, have an advantage. advantage on the yeah. house shot. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I believe so. Um. I don't know. But it's 16 games on each. That's 32 games of ball. No re-oils. And then, just, and then a step ladder immediately after. It depends how many lefties are there. It depends how many riders are there. Because yeah. if there's no re-oil with 16 games on the dead flat, I um, think our side might have an advantage games 13 through 16 there. You know? Yeah, like 12 through 16. It's 12 through 16 because the right side is going to be what? Like, like completely torched. But you do realize that you're going to have to have like a plastic ball. I'll drill one for a hundred thousand dollars. I promise I'll a drill a plastic ball. ball. Mike, you raised. You're I'll talking about this kind of format that reminds me of Holiday Doubles two years ago when you had twelve lefties and twelve righties. Yeah. And you saw Holloman and AJ Rice and all them inside fifth arrow too because their side, you know, getting there it looked like the left had a little bit of an advantage to yep. get to Sunday. But once Sunday came and you have twelve and twelve. Both sides had equal transition, yeah, that was completely which, you fair. Yeah. which you never see. That was you completely never fair. See. And I also want to thank Mike because I went back and watched that live stream, actually, and Mike promised everybody that me and Nathan were going to make the top 12, so I'm glad we didn't let you down right there. So, Did I? <laughs> yes. You said during our squad when they were introducing all the teams, you said, I promise they will be in the top 12. <laughs> I, did I have Lee Bedoris and Dennis Hacker in the booth at the time? Probably? Yes. Yeah, yes. so Lee is a, is my local liaison there, kind of like Eric is here or the Iowa. Okay. So Lee doesn't get to see the guys like you and Stubler when I come out and do this, so he's at a disadvantage. Okay. So he had no idea who the hell you guys were. Oh. Okay. Oh yeah. And and the, you know we were making our little picks or whatever, and I'm like, I got Stubler and Crow. Yeah, you you actually picked us to win, so unfortunately we didn't do that, but but you promised we'd be in the top twelve. Yeah. So that was really nice of you. So. Well, I, I try to make educated guesses, man. You also picked us to um, lose to Tim and Shea, and I will never forgive you for that because I think you jinxed us. <laughs> Don't think I forgot about that two years ago. That was the worst loss of my life. That was Still, bad. to this day. That was bad. <laughs> Still, to this day, it's the worst loss of my life. That was bad, man. Sorry, we'll get our I revenge. Couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I, I still can't believe it. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. You know my job in this booth when we get down to these finals, when they get 50, 60, 70,000 views, 100,000 views, is all I'm trying to do is get the people at home thinking about drama. Oh, yeah. You know, you know I'm, oh, always, yeah. I'm always coming up with something. Oh, yeah. Like, hey, oh, yeah. if this guy happens to go Greek church, Greek church, and it is a two-to-one pattern, and this guy goes up and throws a double, it's only a 10-pin match. No, it was crazy. Right? That's the kind of stuff I have to say to keep the audience that's what the net, engaged. That's Absolutely. But, that's if they, what, but yeah. when that shit happens, when crazy. they go when they go Greek church, Greek church, and the other guy's in it by 10, they go, Mike, Mike knew it. How I did he know? It. How did he, he know it? Well, you say enough things, sometimes you're going to be right. Oh, yeah. And then no. I'm like a genius. Yeah. they. We, we just continue to strike, and Mike just says, they're not out of it. They're not out of it. It's like any sportscaster that's, you know, a football game or a golf tournament. You know, you, you have to keep the audience engaged when somebody's out front by a sizable oh, margin. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know. 
But you do keep people engaged, absolutely. Absolutely. You know how many people cut, came up and told me about that after they were done? My Aww. parents called me. They said, the guy in the booth jinxed you. I said, <laughs> I, said I know, Ma. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, pe pe I mean, it's, people do sometimes think, you know, Joe Buck gets this all the time. He's from St. Louis, but he would call the World Series, and he'd be, like, oh, yeah. showing inflection on, on the team that the Cardinals were playing against. People in St. Louis hated him. Like, really? well, how can Joe Buck do this? You know, his father was Jack Buck, and he called all the games for the Cardinals. And, you know, how can he do this against our whatever? And, and, and it, the broadcasters get it. Well, that's a good thing when that happens. So, oh, yeah. So I can't tell you how many times people hit me up and be like, hey, man, you know, why are you dogging on this person? Oh, yeah. I oh, said yeah. I said about you at Junior Gold a couple years ago. Oh, I remember. You were you were cru you were crushing everybody. Like you were like King Kong compared against all these little, like just you were that <laughs> far and above everybody. And you had like a bracket match coming up in the first round, and the and you you weren't executing. You weren't picking oh, that spares. Horrible. That was you, an ugly match. You just bowled oh, so bad. Oh, I ugly. remember. And I you're so much better than that. He shot three ten or three twenty and one yes, by four. Yes, I know. Okay, I know. See, and, I, and that's when I said on I the air, I said, I said he's he, if Cam's going to be an elite you player and win on me. the tour. Yeah, yeah, I said the, the, he's better than this. Oh know? yeah, I faced. I I remember exactly what match it was. It was against Jeremy Keneally. I bowled yep. 150 yep. the first game. Yep. Um, and I I was in I was in the lead by like 20 leading. or 30 or something yep. like that, and I was like, oh my god, I'm bowling so bad. And I already know you called it like, Cameron missed this spare. Cameron threw that shot 10 right. Now the next shot was 10 left. Uh, yeah, that was brutal. That was really brutal. Yep. And the lanes were incredibly hard. Incredibly. That was a flat. Very, very incredibly flat hard. But I, but I just thought I just think better. I just think more of your game and your ability, oh, yeah. and that's why I was dogging on you. Oh yeah, no, I 100 percent deserved every the, single and, and minute that's of that. Why we bowl because the best players can have bad games and bad tournaments and bad sets. And oh yeah, when that happens, that opens up the field to other players to come through. Right. You and I just talked, Mike, about how if only the it, it, you know, we could probably circle the top 20 or 30 players before this tournament ever begins. Right. But I guarantee you, every one, like you just said, Tim Barron, I guarantee you, every one of them is not going to make the cut. Right. No, they won't. We could we could go the rest of our lives and circle 20 or 30 players to make the cut in every tournament. We'd probably never be right. We'd right. probably never get them all. No, we never, you know? never would be right. Yeah. yeah. Never. And that's why you bowl. Absolutely. What's going on here? Have you guys been looking at scores? Yep. What did uh Mike Pick end up shooting? Was that 220 two, or is that 240? Which one was he? Uh, I think he had the 226. 226. Regardless, that that moves I mean, him that up. That moves even him more. up. Come on, come on, get to that where, 18 over. Where did he move with that big last game? Uh, he got Damn. to eight over for he sure. He did, but yeah. he moved up. He moved up. He was. He was 37th, and he moved all the way up to 23rd. He passed 14 people. Then he bowls 220, so now he gets above that plus 10 number. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so you I, think that's safe? You yeah, think, yeah. You think plus else, 15 is safe? Somebody else will go down. Yeah. So you think plus yep. 15 is safe? Yeah. Really? I think plus 11 is safe. Wow. See, you're doing this drama thing again, Mike. I think you have to be doing the drama thing. There's no way you believe that in your heart of hearts. I do. No way. He's been talking about that the whole block. We believe that. Wow. We believe that plus seven has a chance in this tournament right yeah. now. Seven has a chance. I think ten will be the number. Mm -hmm. Wow. And unfortunately, and un safe. unlike because of number of lanes and number of bowlers, unlike the 11th frame where they paid an additional four people that didn't make the cut, this is not like that. So if you do not make the cut, you do not get paid unless right. you're a female or a senior and cash Correct. in those yep. divisions. Yep. But well, a one, in, one in three cash is plenty, though. So yes. Yes. if you oh, just yeah. miss, yep. that's on you. That's Sorry. exactly right. Yes. I mean, yep. if you well, bowl good, you usually make these numbers. Yeah. yeah. If you're on the bubble, so. you did something wrong. Well, that and, day. The, well yeah. and the reason they do that at the 11th frame is because they only have 13 pair, but they keep right. one open for a breakdown. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then they pay those. Yeah. Because because they have, theoretically, you are in the top third. Right. But they don't, a, a third of the field does not advance to match play. A third would be 52, only 48 advanced match play. So they technically do pay one third of the field. So it is the same as this. But, but. It's okay. It's okay. Me and Eric have a side bet going on. 
Um, and I'm, I'm gonna, not going to say it out loud. And I'm going to lose. I'm gonna and I'm going to lose. We're just going to say. And yeah. I'm going to lose. Yeah. <sighs> I blame you because I, I, I just took your word for it. <laughs> Never listen to you again. <laughs> here, Never here, listen to you again. Here, here's another tournament format I, I would like to see happen that I think is very interesting. Okay. And it, it and it, there's like a chart that tells you what happens based off entries. There's no set rule on this based off how many entries you have is how you do this. Okay. Okay. So imagine you wanted the tournament to run one day and you wanted it to be 13 games. And you would call it like the 13 game eliminator. Okay. Do you want that. me to switch the graphic before you start? Because yes. some people are on game seven. Well, Perfect. are we still over here? So. Oh, yeah, so we you're are. Fine. You're fine. Okay. You can go over to where, well, it doesn't oh. matter. You can always jump a little early. That's fine. Jump a little early there. We'll go back to, oh, I mean, they're on game seven as well. But continue. Okay. I want to hear this. All right. So let's call it the 13, 13, 13 round eliminator. Okay. Something like that, right? So if you had uh, 52 bowlers, right? Okay. They all bowl one game. The two lowest scores are out. That's it. They're gone. Wow. The rest of their day, they can go do whatever they want. One they, game. They are done. So now we're down to what, 50? 50. So we bowl game number two. Next two? Next two, gone. See you later. See you later. Okay. Right? So wouldn't the math work out that? That's 26 games, isn't it? So that would be 26 games. Yeah. Okay, so you would have to eliminate four. Okay, but but you could mess. You could do this different ways. You could do you, two, then you could do six, then you could do five, then you could do three. Yeah, you could you could have like super elimination games. Okay. Like every third game is a super elimination where you grab two extra or something like that. Okay. But you build this into a chart. So what if you ran a 13, the 13 eliminator, 13 round eliminator? You only got so many lanes, and you had 180 people show up. Wow. Well, you go over to the chart and it tells you how many you're chopping every game. Because oh the goodness. chart would go all the way up to like 200 something people. Okay. They kind of do that. They they do that a little bit. There's a, a eliminator tournament in the Friday night of the Hoosier Classic in Indianapolis. Okay. That uh, Nick and oh. his staff runs, and they have two games qualifying, and they cut to I believe it's 64, and then they bowl one more game, and then they cut to 16, and then they bowl one more game, and they cut to eight, and then they right. bowl. So it's similar to that. Right. Yeah. Those are extreme cuts. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. But this would extreme. be a very gradual. Like, you could shoot 150 and still get in. Yeah. Maybe. Like, yeah. 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 I like that. I kind of like that. You know me, what I mean? Let me I like that this, a lot. Let me throw this one out at you, which I just made up in my head just now. But okay. actually, I didn't make it up. He didn't make it up. He stole I, it from somebody. I, I, I already know. It. I could tell you exactly what he did. Well, you know the Stableford system in golf that they used to have a tournament? In golf, the Stableford system is yes. eight points for a double eagle, yep. five points for an eagle, two points for a birdie. You get a par, you get zero. But a bogey, you only lose one point. But a double okay. bogey, you lose three points. Okay. Well, let's say bowling. You, you get a strike, you get five points. You get a spare, you get three points. If you miss a single pin let's say you get minus five points a split conversion you get 10 points for any yeah. split conversion regardless of the point so a split system, conversion is more than a strike well that's what i'm saying i, I it would I, ha but it would have it has to be tweaked it, yeah it would have to exactly like a, yes. seven, a seven yeah. ten would be like 15 points oh that'd be yes. crazy yeah yes. oh yeah okay that a, be? a big four would be 10 yeah, yeah. okay so a five it, seven would be maybe two it, yeah but like it a would baby split would be like Two, one one two. would yeah. reward shot making, but it would penalize miss spares. Sure. Okay. Well, I wouldn't would, mind. I wouldn't mind yeah. a baby split and a washout getting like a half. Okay. You know what? You should do that for your trial system for St. Ambrose. <laughs> God, why? That did could I be bring your little up? test thing, huh? <laughs> well, instead of letting all these freshmen just beat my mean, head in every mean, year, you mean sick instead of, it. of making them easy like I do? Oh, you made them dead easy this year. <laughs> See that? All of three people went plus. Isn't that crazy? It's a lot for you. It's one, It's only one less than last year. Is it? Yep. Only two people went plus? No, we had four. Four last people year. went we plus? We had three this year. Oh. But we could have four because there's one bowler that has a few games left. Oh, yeah. So. How many games are qualifying for your college team? It, it varies. It's usually 27, 28, 29, 30 right in there based on how the calendar falls. And okay. This year was 29 games spread out over eight days of qualifying. So. And every college has, you know, different tryout methods. 
Some use a bracket, some bowl the week before school starts. They bowl all their games in a week. You know, everybody's different there. Okay. I always kind of, I, I kind of pride ourselves on, we, were, we have a really, really, really demanding lane conditions and it stretches out over a little over three weeks. You know, it's a pretty demanding format. Do you put a house shot on any day? In my 11 years at St. Ambrose, we had twice we had a house shot out. Once was by total mistake. The other was this past December, the, the, our last day of tryouts before we broke for winter break. Cam and the guys, it was on that Wednesday, and Cam and some of our bowlers were going to bowl holiday doubles. So they asked me to put out the house shot, and we did. And we had some fun and me that and, day. No, and, yeah. and we did that for nothing because me and Nathan basically took last. So, <laughs> so You no didn't point. take last, but it wasn't one of your better days. No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> and it was strictly because of me. Sorry, Nathan. <laughs> Next year. When I went to Central Missouri, Ron Holmes, one of the days, oiled the lanes from the pin deck forward. Took the lane machine down Forward? Lane. Yep. And ran it backwards. Like. Yep. So it's basically reverse. Yeah. yeah. So but the like, ball hooked okay. out of your hands, and once you got it through there, it never hooked again. How much fun did you have with that one? I mean, it's like kind of bowling the Peterson. You just yeah. chug it at the headpin. Uh, well, I, I lofted it and, okay. it and played fall back. Okay. That's what I always did at the Peterson. I, I bowled the Peterson three times. One, one of those three times I finished in the top 100 for the $1,000. And all three years I brought my spare ball, my plastic ball, and a sling. That's the only ball I ever came in with. But there's as many different strategies at the Peterson as there is for any tournament. You know. Trent is throwing the purple, by the way. You told me he was throwing reactive. Trenton Holes. Where's he at now? He's on lane six. He's on our live stream pair. Right there, he definitely just then threw a purple hammer. Then he's probably been throwing that all day. I'm assuming so. Yep. I told you incorrectly. You did. Yep. Gosh. Just couldn't tell me something can't right now? I trust anything I say, Cam. At all. No. At all. You can hear that, ladies and gentlemen? Every once Goodness in a while. Gracious. Every once in a while, I'll get something right. Hey, Cam. If uh, all of a sudden you walked into a bowling center. Okay. And somebody came up to you and said, hey, man. I've got two pairs of lanes dressed. Okay. Okay. I'm not telling you what's out there. I might, I might have hand oiled them. You don't know okay. what's out there. What score for two games would you feel comfortable putting money on yourself being able to bowl, not knowing what's out there at all? What is that number? The higher, oh. the better. Like no, no, like just what 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 do you what can you guarantee me, one hundred percent? Two hundred. I'll shoot a hundred both games. I promise. So that's all you would put out there. No, that's crazy. Uh, what would be your number? You think in other words, you think you can shoot one hundred and fifty on any condition known to man? Like, would do your number be three hundred for the two games? It's gotta be right. Don't you think so? What do you think your number would be, Mike? I think I can. I'm not gonna say guarantee, but I think I can give somebody 300. I could chuck it at the head pin if need be. Obviously, if you're presenting that, you're you're kind of bringing into the, the fact that they're going to be tricked up. Yeah, they're going to be impossible, but it, I could chuck it at the head pin, maybe, right? <laughs> I I buy a plastic ball before I walk into the bowling alley. <laughs> well, at the Peterson, the racks come into play, and there's a lot of other factors too. It's not just those conditions. I would say I would say for surely, for sure, 275. For sure. For a big for a big chunk of money. For sure, 275. Big, big chunk of money. Are we going to make this happen? No, 275 is too low. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, you want me to say something I crazy. See, See you wanted the drama. <laughs> no, no, I was just wondering what it was. I, I don't know. Because, I, because I think 320 might be an interesting proposition. I give myself 335, realistically. I think I can shoot and 335. That's 100% of the time. Now, what about 50% of the time? 400. For Four, sure. 400. For 50 sure. 50% of the time. 50% of the time? Okay, we'll continue this in a moment. Mm, that's All right, what do you, what do you, what do you think the, the number is for 20th right now? Okay, so after after five games, it was 18. was plus 22. Okay. Or 18, I'm it sorry. 18. 18. It was 18. I'm going to say it's, it's, I'm going to say it's 14. Now. I'm going to say it's 20. Went to 34. Holy smokes. Come on, baby. Oh, not you, Spencer. I'm so sorry, Spencer. Yeah, I don't even mean to say that. It didn't. Oh, I'm so sorry, Zachary. Oh, no, you didn't. Wow. 
That didn't happen on A Squad. I wanted to be right so bad that my friends, uh, my friends are right next to me who are sweating the number out, and uh, I said, "Let's and, go, baby." I didn't mean it. I really didn't mean home, it. I'm and sorry. For those of you at home that thinks Mike just sits there and gloats about his prognostications that come true, he just told you one, and he was very forthcoming, and it did not Dead favor wrong. his situation, his didn't prediction. Favor it. Didn't favor it, but, but it doesn't end it. It didn't end it though. But they don't. But they don't. They don't end the football game <laughs> halfway through the third quarter. That's they exactly don't. Right. They don't. Yeah, right now, 171 is your leader, Trenton Holes. Oh, Shram he's bowling incredible. Shramick is second oh at 142. Goodness. Dettlinger is third at 141. Purdue is in fourth at plus 131. Gear is in fifth at 116. Galbraith is at 113 and sixth. Mason is seventh at 106. Eighth is Ryan Powers at 100. Gins is at 99. we got a player at 98 all the way down. 29 or plus on this squad. Oh, my That's goodness. a lot of people. Oh my what goodness. is 10th place on this squad, Mike, right now? 98. So 10th place is 98 on this squad. Oh, wow. And 10th place after seven games on A squad was only 83. 83 or something like that, right? So if that number goes down a little bit, that top 10 will be similar on both squads. But, I don't think it's going to go down. But though. there were only seven, uh, 19 players that finished plus after A squad seven games, and I don't think we're going to lose ten in game seven here. I don't think so either. So because are you still confident in your 11, Mike? Ten. ten. Oh, sorry. See, look, oh, I apologize. Ten. We are basing, we're kind of in agreement on this, and we're basing it not on this squad, we're basing it on C squad. Yeah. The lanes and the depth of the squad yeah. is what we're basing that yep. prognostication, prognostication on. Yeah, the thing is with C squad now, with the way this is shaking out right now, with a game to go, is we might be taking 24, 25, 12 off of C squad. Yeah, you think he can get as low as 12 off of C oh, squad? We has in the past. You think that squad is that weak this no, year? No, no, we're not saying that. Oh, they just play tough. They just play tough. Yeah, we're not. We don't want to disparage okay. anybody on C squad because no. there are so many good bowlers on C squad. We're simply saying track record. I'm just and it yeah. may not happen. All I'm tell all I'm saying is this is my path to ten. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm outlining my path to ten. Yep. It's kinda like I'm outlining the path on the election go. night. Yeah. The right. path to two sixty five right, electoral exactly, votes. Right. This is how this is how this candidate this can get here, yes, right? Yeah. If he carries Arizona and South Carolina, uh, yeah, then, yeah, but yeah. this one's gonna carry Nevada. Uh -huh. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I'm going to try to go uh, highlight some players who are chasing that number right now. Oh, that's a good idea, Cam. Um, who, we got, who we got in the who vicinity Who we got here. in the vicinity right now. I'm looking around. Oh, if, look at the scores. Go ahead. If that number ends up being there, you got these players that are that are anywhere from minus 20 Jacob to plus 30 close that to are us. in the game. Darren Bloomquist is close to us. He's in 21st He's plus at plus 29. 27. He started off 5-1. Left a 10-pin. He's shooting it right now. So he's a frame, too. So he's got some frames to go. Um, I don't know. who. People need to start wearing their names on the back of their shirts sometimes. I, I'm saying that as I don't do that at all. But some people need to wear it because I need to figure out who they are. Mike, how do you figure out how these people are? This is the most impressive thing. This got to be the most impressive thing. If they don't have their names, you just got to hope. To Cam, know him? He brings me to in the him? booth because he thinks I know everybody, and in reality, I don't. Okay, so first of all, there's a there's a lane assignment sheet that I that yeah. I is that, that I put out right very there strategically a certain yeah. way. Okay, yep. you do it just like that. Yep, you can see all the different lanes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I go to a pair and I say, okay, so I look here like Mackie, find Mackie on the sheet, and if you want to know who the bowlers are on the left. Uh, you go to the pair next to the yes. left. Okay. And then, and then if they if they're A and B, it means they're on the left lane. So you got a 50-50 shot of where okay. they started. And then the right lane. Then you look for a bowler's name shirt again. She normally does that for me, but she's slacking and didn't do it this block. She just wanted to embarrass me. She saw me coming to the booth, and she was like, "All right, Cameron, you're just gonna look stupid in yeah, front of all these normally, people." She normally That's does it happen. for me, but this squad, she you know, slacking. And then she doesn't. She doesn't actually. She bowls the third squad. She is. She's on and, C squad. And, oh, you bowl it? And, and, and yeah. Joe never brings me the A, B, C's. Okay, superstar. 
At least I don't think he has. He may have. Jennifer but. usually bowls C-Squad, okay, so she's bowling again find? tonight. He just, yep. he just, so he who just do we need tries to, find? to keep who do we the tournament running. Who do you think you have a big game? Josh Zilk. Where's Josh Zilk at? He just keeps the tournament uh, running over he there. Was, That's he was struggling when I looked. <laughs> um, but he was up there okay. Josh Zilk He is, is minus 19. So, who knows? He shoots 230. Maybe he gets to that theoretical plus 11, and maybe that's right there. Is he anywhere close? Is he on our last stream? He's moving anywhere? down toward the higher end. He's moving yeah. down toward the high end? Yeah. Uh, well. Can I see his game? No. Okay, so Will Young is right here on the right. Will Young started strike 7-2 yeah. and, and left a two-pin. And he's plus four. Who All else right. we got? Where is Jake Bedard? He's plus five. Sure. I, I think I see game. a path to me being able to bowl at Cadillac in February. You think so? Yeah, I could bowl B squad and have you two guys call call the action in the booth while I bowl. I and like that. I like the sound of that. I think be, I just figured it out. Be $20 so are you each. telling me I'm a good commentator, Mike? <laughs> I'm saying you could get us through a block. Oh, you don't want to give me too much credit now. Come on now. Yeah, but everybody like, likes Cam and nobody likes me, so well, that'd be kind of like good guy, bad guy in the booth. Something like that. Good guy, horrible guy. <laughs> one guy one guy can't predict the cut number, and the other guy's right on it. And the other guy's Cameron Crow. <laughs> well, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> what do you <laughs> mean? <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh. Let me see what they're saying in the comments. Yeah, Zach Gear. Yeah, shout out Zach Gear. He's what, 116 over? Is yes. that what he is? Yeah. 116. Bowling out of his mind. He's in fifth place. Bowling who's very letter well. B on six right now? Holes? Oh, that's or no. Uh, who's, that's who's bowling Zach with Gear. Holes? That's Zach Gear. Gear's got the front five. He's got five. the front five. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's bowling. Yeah, he's in fifth place. At he plus is bowling. That, can, that whole to move pair up. is doing good. That could get, if he has a big game, he could be the squad leader. Here. He can be the squad. He can be the overall the, leader. Yeah, but yeah, because the current leader, Trenton Holtz. That's 80 oh, in the he's, fifth. He's 55 ahead of him, but that's that 55 pin's already been it's erased gone. here. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because he's got the front five. Yeah. Zach Gear looking, yeah. looking to take over the squad lead. Man, that would be what a block for Zach Gear that would be. So, Cam, here's the kind of work you have to do up here. So, she handed you that she with all the letters. Okay. She's going to need that to go get scores. Mm -hmm. Oh, so I got to give it back no, to her? No, no. You got to grab your sheet and hurry up and put down all those all those letters you next to those You got to record all of them. Oh, crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's Eric's job. I'm going to just talk. That's, that's stuff I have to do up here. That's oh, impressive. You know, he mentioned that. And one thing we do know. Is that gear? In, a, in, about, in about 18 hours Is that a good from bang? now. You'll see me running around with a clipboard, and you'll yep. be up here writing numbers down, and we'll meet. And I'll walk over to you and go, you got this one? Yeah, we'll you meet got in the one? middle, and then we'll figure it out, and we're we're almost always right. We almost yep. hit our top ten. Hey, what's that um, message it says on there? Uh, feedback to tech. Oh, yeah, just click OK. Cool. It's probably getting tired of me being in the booth, Mike. That's Means what one I'm of saying. us got too loud. <laughs> oh. Uh -huh. Yeah, I was I was messing. I was messing oh, around. Oh, see. I, I was messing around. Actually, Mike's just trying to make my job really hard. I forgot they were listening over there. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's what you get. Who's trying to listening? make my job sound really hard. Big, big brother's always listening. <laughs> big brother. And little sister. Listening. And big mama. They're always listening. Yeah. Can you see those scores? No matter yep. when you try to get away from them, they're still listening. <laughs> Joe comes over five or six times during the block and goes, can you increase your words per minute? Jeez, Joe, give oh me a goodness. break. Oh, yeah, he's cutthroat over there. Oh, my goodness, Joe. <laughs> yeah. Joe runs a Gosh. tight ship. Yeah. That's and crazy. And Rosie's the, Rosie's the head of the operation. Well, Rosie apologizes every tournament to me. I'm so sorry for my husband. He is, <laughs> wow. He Jeez, is just okay. so demanding. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> uh. And if anybody believes any of what I just said, please don't. <laughs> Please don't. They are the nicest people yeah. in the world. Yeah. And, and we're making them out to be horrible bosses humans. and bossy and oh, <laughs> all in good fun. <laughs> you know, I hear there's a rumor, you know, that, that egg machine over there? Okay. There's a rooster machine, egg machine. I don't know what they call it. It's got a chicken. I don't know. Yep. Bok, 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 anyway, bok, that bok, that that was at the old maple. It survived the oh. fire. It survived the I fire. I mentioned that to them this morning because I made the comment to right. Joe and Rosie. I said how much? I said when she was in junior bowling at Maple Lanes and that chicken machine was there. Yep. I said she darn near single-handedly along maybe with her brother Greg of putting the family into bankruptcy because that chicken machine. Yep. <laughs> And I, I used to be able to hear it on the air <laughs> yes. at Maple. Yep. You would hear it randomly while I'm, like, in the booth. Buck, yep. buck, buck, buck. Well, anyway, I hear there's a rumor that inside that, that machine now, 
are little Joel Inglekiss little figurines that you get out of there. <laughs> they're, yep, <laughs> right out of there. And I also but they're not at every age. I heard that Joe is going to donate his entire prize check from the USBC Open Championships and get get dollar bills and put them inside those eggs. Oh, isn't that what a grateful human being, That's Joe? That's a, what a, a wonderful person. Oh, That's how oh good my of goodness! A guy he is. Yeah. Oh, what a it's, nice it's guy! It's a quarter to put a quarter in the machine, and Joe's going to give you at least a dollar back. Wow! Wow! Think of the line in front of that machine. So I'm oh going to I'm going to go over and petition to find out. Hey, what's your favorite color, Joe? Because you know those eggs are going to pay the most. Oh, they're going to have twenty dollar <laughs> or fifty dollar bills. In there, yeah. <laughs> Mars is on lane 25 and six. He's too far down there for me to go check. Well, here's here on five and six. That li that's just Lucas. That, you got to ignore him. No, but that string has been stretched into a six bagger there by by Mr. Gear here. Was it? Yes, he's got the six front bagger. Six that's now. the front seven, the Eric. Front King, seven. Come on now. That's what I just said. Oh, yeah. totally. Yeah. Yep. Trent Hose is going to lose his lead on his good buddy, Zachary Gear. Zachary Gear is looking over to of take that, over. They're both falling really well. Today. Yeah, no, they both have really solid blocks. Really yeah. two solid players. So is, is Gear related to Richard Gear? I wonder. Uh, uh, I different spelling. Oh, that's a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> so we got. <laughs> oh boy. But they might be, and maybe one of them changed it. Hey, now I like what you're talking. Maybe one of them changed your spelling. Who's match. got the front uh, front six over there? Uh, uh, blue shirt, blue shirt. That would be. I know that guy. Rob Warren, I that believe. That is Rob yes. Warren. Yes. Part see, of see how good it is. Yeah. Uh -huh. Pro Shop, right? Yeah, and where's he at? Rob standing? Warren would be 82 under. Oh, baby. This oh. could be some business. What, he can get to 18? Oh, uh, that's over your number last I checked. It is it is. not? Uh, I'll take the under on him bowling 300. Uh, if you give me 10 to 1 odds, I got you. You know, Mike, we sat Ooh, in here last that's year a and good said uh -huh. it's amazing we haven't seen a 300 yet. And uh -huh. as soon as we opened our mouths, we saw one. Remember that? Yeah, there won't be one. Though. And I'm so glad you didn't say yes because uh, he got an eye. So. Yeah. Oh, well. That would be over. That with. was the kiss of death there. Well, are we going to kiss another death here in the eighth frame? I know. Here Zachary he goes. Zachary Gear. He's getting ready on lane six. He's got the front seven. Was he in Pretty Woman? I think he was. <laughs> Pretty well, Woman is crazy. One of the gears was, but I don't <laughs> yeah. think it was Zachary. Okay. I'm not saying he couldn't have been in, the, in there as an extra, but well, he might my, have been. But he wouldn't have been because that movie came out in 1990. And I didn't know I you were such a fan that you can just rattle off the year that quickly. I d Eric knows every <laughs> single thing. <laughs> every single thing. <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> but. <I did>. but <laughs> But I don't think Zachary is 32 years old. <laughs> and he oh, has and the, he's front got the front eight. eight now. You want me to call Richard, see if he's tuning in? <laughs> Eric, how did you know that? Yeah, he. he I know my uh, movies. Yeah. I know movies. You know, I'm pretty good at movies. Really Howard, good at Howard, it. Howard the Duck. What year, Howard the Duck? 87. I bet you're. I bet, you're, I bet he's right. I, bet I don't even got to Google it. You're looking it up, aren't you? I'm going <laughs> to. You're within one year. Yeah, it's either and, 86 and or 87. And, and that's the rule. It's either 86 or 87. I think Ishtar might have been 87. Let me I don't see. Know. Howard the Duck was 86 or 87. I said 87. Howard it the might duck. have been 86, though. Who? Somebody has 290 down there. I don't know who that is. 1986. Though. Okay. Wow. See, I, I thought it was I one think of the I think you to change. And, See, he doesn't know everything. Don't gas his head up that Ishtar much. Ishtar was 87 then. Okay. No, those one are, of the worst movies those ever are made. Widely regarded as two of the biggest bombs in the in the history of movies. Okay. Comedy. What about Short Circuit? Was nice it? Before, I hated it? that movie. That was uh, 1986. Uh, 83 or 80, no, that was 85, I believe. 1986 again. Oh, you hated the movies in 86. I was off. The, I was off by a year on that one too. Dang. What about the movie Rad? It's a BMX movie. I don't know that movie. Nope, you got me there. I don't know that. I bet one. it was like 86 also. Was I'm it? just picking up all 19, 1986. I'm picking all 86 movies. You are. So th right there, I can get you get me you get me on a year, and I can just start naming movies from that year. <laughs> <laughs> what was the best the Academy Award winner for Best Picture in 1986? I know that. Eric, you do. Why would you know that? Ah, you were like 50 at the time, so that makes sense. It's Platoon. Platoon. Now, what you may find when you look this up, 
is it may say Platoon was 87 because that was, it was in March of 87 that the award was handed out, but it was from movies in 1986. Okay. If you guys don't know Eric Liddick, he actually is one of the smartest people I know. Oh, but I'm not going to, this is the, the only time nine. I'm going to say this. Got it. Bang. He's got it. Nine in a row for Zach. Mike, I think you got to work on your bangs. You know who does it really well? Uh, Emil. Yeah, Emil no, Williams, superstar uh, at it. Yeah, I'm not a. Uh, I, I use it as a lead up, as just a, as an appetizer. Oh yeah, I think that has it's, to be like the entree though. No, 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 no. It's like not the bang, main, that's not the like a Mike core. Green bang. There it is. Brad Miller and Nick Pate getting uh, eggs out of the chicken machine. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> no matter how many eggs they get out of that machine, Jennifer. They cannot get as many eggs out of there as you have in your life. <laughs> <laughs> and your mom and dad will attest to that. <laughs> 19, they, they say 1986 doesn't exist. Brad had blonde hair. What do you mean blonde hair? He had hair. Hair. <laughs> Period. <laughs> he had hair? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Yes. <laughs> Brad wasn't always 1986 bald. Academy Award I thought he just came out the best womb ball. picture was out of Africa with Sidney Pollack. No, that was 85, but the award was handed out in 86. So, so you're telling me in 1987 it's going to be platoon? Yes. Trent Ho's struggling a little bit this yeah, game. You're not wrong. You're yeah. not wrong. Yeah, because it just kind of depends on how they look at it. The year of the movie's release or the year of the Oscar being handed out. What year was Bridge Over River Kwai? 1957. <laughs> look it up. <laughs> I'm not going to. What about, no, Red, what about Red Dawn? Oh, that movie was so bad. That was 83, and that was an awful movie. It was a guilty play. It was so bad you couldn't take your eyes off what it. What year do you go up to before you start getting really shaky? Actually, the more current ones are tougher. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Eric, do you, know, um, do you know sports like you know that? Like, Do you know like all your NBA champions? That's the um, one you, thing I pride myself on. You can test the one me, thing. You're going to beat me on that. I kill you, you can, in that. You can but I'm a basketball to, fan. You can That's try different. To let, let me have a crack at it. That's different. Yeah, but who yeah. shot 150? Was that Trenton? Yes, 157. Okay. Oh, that's okay, irrelevant right now. We, we got front nine. Front nine right now. Yep. Yep. And he is up to bowl. Looking for the lead, frame. right? Yep. Yeah, for, for the, the lead. lead. For the Did lead. anybody get the 200 over a squad? What's that? Yeah. First one. That looks good. Bang. Yeah, that was good. I don't like bang. I don't want to steal it from Emil. I want to say boom. Or like pow. Something like that. I just I like I like stating what's happening, like what that just did with they, some, with, the lead. With, with authority. So like you know, and a and a three hundred for gear gets him in the lead and he's gonna sleep well tonight coming in tomorrow with a nice cushion. For the cashers round, mm -hmm. what a like call! That. You know, something okay. like that. something like that. Okay, I don't just go bang. No, no, no and that's no offense <laughs> to a meal. You have to add some superlatives and adjectives to it, Mike, to spruce it up a little bit. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I don't, I don't practice. I just do it in the moment. So he's not simply throwing the ball here for an 11 strike in a row. He is on the. This approach, is for the lead. Legs chattering oh. just a little bit. This is more than the lead. This is well. He already, he already took over the lead. So this is just for a little bit of cushion. Big shot. Gets the hit. Bang. Hunter back. See, your bang is bad. You Don't say that again. And where is he playing? He's playing what, like 17 to 11? Got to be. Something like that. He's not as left as I thought he would be. He usually is a superstar left. So We got one shot away, Mike. Oh, yeah. One shot for a 300 here. So, Cam, after this shot is completed, if he gets it, you got to hit the button all the way on the right. Right here? Yeah, you'll need to hit that after. Like, oh, the give, playback. Give it like three seconds. Okay. It's the instant replay. Well, regardless, let's play it again and see what happened if he doesn't strike. But I'm okay. betting he's going to throw a quality shot for a strike and cap it off here. All that does is clip the last 30 seconds, and then we have to go in and do the replay. But that, ah. you, you have to do it. Once okay. It's done. Just give it a few seconds to breathe, and then you can hit the button. I don't know. Is he taking a little extra time here? Does it seem he's like trying to ice was himself? He, was the people around him bowling, and he's falling right? It, this just looks a little slowed down. From and 
here we go. That's right there. That's there. 300 for Zach Gear. What a way to finish your block. Uh, he was at 117 over. 116. 116. Gets him to 216. 216. And that will be the lead, and ladies that, and gentlemen. That's, that's going to put him in prime position heading to tomorrow. Where's this guy from? Well, what's the story Wisconsin. on this? Guy? He's from Michigan. Yeah. He's definitely from he Detroit. To, he he goes to, to Whitewater. Whitewater. Does yep. he still go there? No, I think he's done. Yeah. But I don't quote Mike, me you want that. me to go get him in the booth? Don't quote me. I can definitely do that. No, we're going to be wrapping this up so I can go get some food. I, I agree. It's yeah, time well, for me to go home. I, I won't be prolonging tonight, today's. So I'll be back <laughs> yeah. for seven more games this evening. See, I had dinner between A and B squad because I knew I was going to eat. Eric, that's not dinner. That's at 1 o'clock. That's lunch. Well, that was lunch. But I, yeah, I had, I I had a big dinner. meal as well. <laughs> I'm just going to grab a quick snack, but I just got to get out of here. Oh, yeah. To, yeah, to you got to take, oh, yeah. yeah. take a break. But that was pretty impressive, 300. Incredible. We got, we got another good game going right in front of us. Lucas Purdue here working on a... 247, and he's in fourth. He's trying to get to 170. Cam, you got to switch to the other cameras because it's the only people we got bowling. 11, uh, where, where are they at? The, the other pair. 8 the to 11? Available. 11 and 12, yep. Or, uh, yeah. Or 11 either. and 12. There you go. So you got it under control there. Come on now. I think I'm becoming professional at this, honestly, you're, Mike. Yeah, hey, you're doing a great job. Thank you. I really do I'm appreciate it. I'm bowling that. next year. Now you're going to bowl? Yeah. You're going to bowl the Winter Classic? Uh, probably, yeah. Absolutely. Because you're going to cover the booth. Oh, I will. 100%. Can oh, I bring my guest in? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, yeah. He didn't like oh, yeah. that, but it rolled, finished. In the Eric, you're not going to be ten. one of my guests. You know that? I know. I just <laughs> have to come to the realization that I'm out. <laughs> I, I'm no, we'll pick Eric. It seems like it seems like they don't mind you over here, except the 30 people that texted me and said, get Eric out the get, booth. Get him but besides out of there. them. Quick, get him out of there. Please, he's been in there too long. So what did he finish at over? 270? 216. Oh, 216. Yep. I'd have been 270 over. That's right. That's what I was thinking. You, yes. Yep. Definitely. Worthman would have been 450 <laughs> over, though, if he'd have Oh. Bobby. Bobby Worthman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he averaged 230.85. That's a good day's work on this pattern. It was. That's a lot. Yep. It's a lot of pins. He was 70 pins over average the last game. Did Will Young run out of pins? What yes, was he? He, he was did. four over. Yeah, yeah I think he, he, ran, out of he pins. ran out of time. Can't get there. <sighs> Unfortunately. Still, uh, still, he was in the hunt all day. It's good experience, oh, yeah. and he was right there. And still has the ability to get to finish at minus two, which is not a horrible score on this pattern. Where you was know, Brian Tippett he at? Won't be, he's Shots he's two, way two, up there. Oh, he's, he's up there. He's very well today. He's yeah. tough. Yep. Darren Bloomquist, he was about 20 over going into this game, so he's got to stay clean here to stay into the number. He could use a couple strengths here to, to kind of give him a little bit of a cushion, cushion for tomorrow. There, yeah. Bang. Another great shot great from pitch. Brian up there. Yep. So, yeah. Conan Mackey, I thought he was up there. Was no, he not? he's struggling today. Oh, he's struggling a little yep. bit? Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah, he's struggling today. Bloomquist is good, right? Bloomquist, yeah. He yep. shoots 190, he's good. He shoots 180. My number, he's struggling. Your number, he's super safe, apparently. Okay. How'd you finish? Out of baby. Way to work. Jerry Mars finishes at 73 and over. What, that's what Cam and I were talking about. When he was plus nine, we thought he could make a move, and he did. I said that was that was basically yep. my lock for who was out of so the number, who was going to get that, in. That was the first name that you and I came across oh, that yeah. we thought – could put on a big run, and he did, and that's not a surprise with Jerry. Never. Well, he, does, he doesn't drive no. more than two hours to not make cuts. Oh, absolutely. He's a good He's a good player. Very good player. And, Very and, solid. Yeah, and, you know, when you're a good player like that and you're outside the number looking in, you know, you've got to have the confidence in yourself to believe that you can come from outside the number to get there because you ain't going to always bowl good right out of the blocks. We're young with a seven count there. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think it is my time to exit the booth here. Thank you guys for having me. Thanks for coming by. Of course. And, uh, Mike, if you will have me tomorrow after I don't make this top ten. No, I'm kidding. Oh, I got I to gotta speak it into existence. We're going to make the top ten. Cam, do not get a speeding ticket on the way back, and we will see you in the morning. Don't say that, Eric. Guys, I've never got a speeding ticket in my life. I didn't get two coming here last God, year. God, I hope his mom and dad are <laughs> you out, you, out, you outrun them every time? Oh, no. <laughs> I wish. That GMC I, doesn't outrun you anybody. you turn down number one. 
All right. See you guys. See you, Cam. There you go. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Mike, we're on our last, we're on the last, literally the last few frames here. And then you get a nice long break. 50 minutes. Yep. That's, Maybe. That's not a nice or a long break. That's a short break. Correct. Well, I wolf down an entire medium pizza in the break because between A and B. All by myself. Nice. <laughs> That was my breakfast and lunch. <laughs> well, when, the, when these two shots are thrown, Mike, we're in our final frame of the of the squad. It is going to be interesting to see what that number does between game six and game seven here. Because there was 29 players over on this block alone. Yep, here's the 300 oh, shot again. Replay, it looked really good when he let it go. I mean, it wasn't it's basically in or playing anything. twenty to about nine. ten. Yeah, yep. yep. We're pretty much yep. on the same page there. Yep. Yeah, the the shots we saw out of his game were all laced. They were all right in the pocket. His dinner will taste a lot better tonight. Definitely. We are now in the final frame of the block. Oh, the surprise for everyone, and I never got back to it. Uh-oh. So earlier we ran a poll about Hootie and the Blowfish time. Mm-hmm. And uh, whether it was a song that was uh, basically we had four <laughs> options. It was, uh, you know, it's a classic, it's a solid song, it's uh, below average, or it needs to be. Or now, which one? Are you talking about Hootie and the Blowfish yeah. or the Alan Parsons project? No, Ho Hootie and the Blowfish. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. And then... Uh, and then I mentioned that we were going to do it for a band on this particular block, and unfortunately we didn't get to it, so we'll have to do it tonight. Mm. I will not forget tonight. Stay tuned, folks. Yep. See, that is the segue into that to draw everybody back for tonight's I session. know, right, Yep. because it's so important. <laughs> yes. Think of the people out there that are going to be thinking about that throughout this entire hour. Oh, I know. Yeah. I know. It's going to happen. <laughs> Squad one, game seven. Squad two, game I know I was trying to five. keep get those back in order for you because squad we kind of got them out of order, Mike. Round one, squad two. I think we're close here. Squad two, squad two, squad two, squad two, squad two. Perfect. Squad one. All right. Stuff is in order. All right. We're on the last two bowlers now. Eric, thank you for coming in and sitting with me. It was fun having Cam in here as well. My honor to be in here with you, Mike. That was a long block. I appreciate all the help. Yeah. Also want to thank uh, Waterloo Convention and Visitors Bureau, of course, and Fusion Bowling. I am bowling. You can save 25% off with coupon code GIBA. The Steen Team, Brandon Steen. If you're looking for a mortgage up in this area, check out Brandon Steen at the Steen Team. Of course, Budweiser and Bud Light. Remember to drink responsibly. The Hampton Inn is the official hotel of the greater iowa bowling association the other place otherwise known as op restaurant over on ridgeway also a sponsor and when you're leaving or coming in or out of town make sure you hit up quick trip or quick star and of course our title sponsor ebonite if you're looking for a new bowling ball make sure you consider an ebonite bowling ball for your next purchase all great sponsors and that's why there's such a great prize fund here Ryan Tippett finishing his block with a nice 230-something here. I don't know if I've ever seen him throw the ball as good as he is today. No. Well, Ryan's a very, very good bowler. Um, I believe he's bowled this the last couple of years, but yep. he went for a long time without bowling these major events. It's good to see him back in here bowling because he's always thrown the ball well. And he's bowled very well today. He was, I believe he was in 10th going into this game, and this is going to move him up. Yeah. He's, uh, he's, he's a right good bowler. At a, right at 100 over, I think, isn't he? 98. Yeah. That's a 236. That's going to take him to plus 134. 
All right, Mike, this is my time to sign off and say thanks for having me. Thanks, and thanks for being here. I'll see you tonight, Mike. All right, thanks. That's Eric Littig, everybody. I appreciate his time here in the booth. Appreciate you watching here today on Inside Bowling. We'll be back at 7 o'clock tonight or just slightly after for C-Squad qualifying seven games coming up for you right here from Maple Lanes here in Iowa. So for the entire crew here at Maple Lanes, including uh, General Manager Ryan and, of course, Joe and Rosie and uh, – and Jennifer, my name is Mike Flanagan. Thanks for watching uh, continuing coverage here of the 2023 Ebonite Fall Classic from Maple Lanes, Waterloo, Iowa. We'll be back at 7 o'clock here tonight with more bowling for you as we cut down to the top 56 bowlers for tomorrow's Cashers Round. See you in a little bit, everybody.